This Let's Play was supported by these awesome hobby companies. Hello, everybody. Today we are joined by Cubicle 7's lead designer for uh, Warhammer Soulbound, uh, Emmett. And Emmett is going to be running us through our first ever game together. Mm, so, lucky ducks. Uh, <laughs> to have you back. And we work on the principle that if you're here and you've basically wrote big chunks of this, then we can't get things terribly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I Not that I would abuse my can, power. We can try. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I mean, realistically we will get things badly wrong but that's going to be in game not mm. rules wise so um yeah. yeah it'll be it'll be a sight to behold you put so, me under pressure i, I forget half the rules yeah. <laughs> make it up as you go tell people yeah. it's, it's yeah. going to be errated yeah, yeah. yeah. fix yeah. it in post <laughs> um, so we're going to be playing a game set in bright spear and we're going to be using the pre-gens from mm -hmm. the uh the, the starter set but we're not actually going to be playing one of the actual scenarios from that set is that correct yeah so um basically we'll run this canonically after the events of the starter set right um where the, the binding has already been in bright spear and solved the mystery of the faltering light adventure um and this um adventure draws on one of the adventure seeds we have in I actually think it's in the, the Cities of Flame, the GM screen book. And mm -hmm. it's, I've combined it with another adventure that we have to, to get something nice and nice and succinct and punchy and give you guys a good experience. Mm -hmm. uh, bright spear in the rules. And uh, Excellent. Yeah. Uh, this should all be fun and games then. So before we get into it and introducing our characters, I thought it'd be helpful for people uh, following along to have an idea of what the characters are and what the sort of mechanics are. So I have here one of the... Um, pre-mades that we're not going to be using so no spoilers because there are bits on the character sheet that refer to other people and and your connections to them so i thought it'd be good to, to show one that we won't be using and that is our night quester relatorius so yes. do you want to take us through what what sort of things people see on i suppose the front of the the, the sheet and then we'll flip on the averse yeah absolutely so the the sheets come as gatefold so you have this, you can see the, the left and right panels there, as you can see, and they would fold in. Um, so on the front, you just have little kind of quotes from Val that will give you an idea of what she's like, um, who she is, just a quick rundown, um, what her personality is like, and why you might want to play her, uh, basically. And then some nice, big, evocative, chunky artwork to take mm -hmm. a look at. Just just a little guide, for, particularly for new players, just to give them something to latch on to. Um, and at a glance, go, oh, I want to be, I want to be the tank, I want to be the spellcaster. Um, you know, that, that sure. kind of thing. It's handy. It's like a player screen. So whenever you're playing at the table, everybody can see who you are as well. It's <laughs> yeah. in front of you. And then the uh, other side is all of the meat and potatoes. Mm -hmm. Yep. So on the, the left side, you just have some character details, age, pronouns, height, weight, all that kind of stuff. Um, you have some goals that you can pick for the character. Um, these are tied a little bit more closely to the... Uh, the Star Wars Adventure, but some of them are more broadly tied to the city itself. And mm -hmm. um, so you can pick one or all of them if you wish. Um, then connections we have between players. Uh, again, you, you could pick all of them, but there's one tying, say, Val to each of the other four uh, pregens. Mm -hmm. And you have the same on the other pregen sheets where they, they each have a connection with someone. So you could pick that connection or just have all of them, um, which is just a, a nice way to jump in and go, oh, I have this relationship with this person that immediately yeah. gives me something mm -hmm. to latch onto. Uh, and then again, you have secrets down the bottom, which uh, just give you a little bit more role playing flavor that may or may not come out during play. Um, again, pick, pick one or all, depending on how, how secretive you are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and at, at the bottom, you have your gear and currency, which includes your, uh, your money, which is your drops of Aqua Garanus. Mm -hmm. So in, in the Age of Sigmar, particularly in Akshi, they. Uh, Instead of coins, they use this uh, because there's a realm of metal. So uh, me metal starts to lose its value and you can just <laughs> nip, to, nip to a realm and just pick up all the gold hanging around. Um, <laughs> so the the actually in particular uses Aqua Garanus, which is this magically infused water from the realm of life. Um, so you have you know people who will actually have divination plates that can check the, the quality and purity of the mm -hmm. water and it's not it's actually magical water not just regular water <laughs> yeah the mm -hmm. uh good thing about this is if you get in trouble you can just drink your money because it will uh 
it will heal you and you'll okay. recover from in, uh, injuries and wounds, <clears throat> which, which is very useful. Basically, it's, it's health potions and currency all in one. Which, which um, that's great. excellent. In real life, yeah. I also drink most of my money. <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> and it, it does act like a potion of strength for our Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have the, uh, the main body of it then, I suppose, yeah. with the, the stat blocks. Yeah, so you have your body, mind, and soul. We only have, we have three attributes in Soulbound. Body is, you know, it's your physical strength, um, your toughness, but else your like body awareness and agility as well. Um, your mind is your problem solving um, mm. and intelligence and you know, quick wit. And soul is more a little more esoteric. It's kind of your willpower. You could equate it a little bit to uh, like charisma and that kind of thing in, in mm. other systems, um, but uh, very much like your sense of self and, and your personality. Uh, and then we have the skills beside them. Um, the skills aren't particularly tied to any any of the attributes. They can kind of float around a little bit. Okay. Um, there are some that that um, are pretty much always go to, together. So you might have mind awareness, which would be noticing stuff around you. Mm -hmm. um, but then you could also make a soul awareness test, which would be about like getting a, a feeling uh, or, or a sense of you know something, something spooky nearby. Um, so you can do that. You can kind of mix and match some of the, some of the, the skills. The, um, you can have training and focus. So I, I should say it's a D6 dice pool system. So if you have uh, body four, it means you're rolling four dice uh, with a body test. Um, you can have training and focus. So uh, Vela has training in athletics. She has one training in athletics, which means it gives her an extra dice. Mm -hmm. So if she was making a body athletics test, she would roll five. Um, and then you have other skills where you'll have focus, which is a little plus one that you can use to modify one of your dice. Mm -hmm. uh, so on Val's weapon skills, say if she makes an attack, if she gets a three, she can use that plus one to bump it up to a four, um, that kind of thing. And are the um, dice difficulties always set or do they fluctuate as well? So if you're rolling five dice, is always five on fours or could it be heading on sixes or whatever? Yeah, it, it does vary. So by default, it's usually a, a, what we call the difficulty, which is the first number, difficulty four. Um, mm -hmm. And then difficulty four one would mean you need a one, or sorry, you need a four on one dice. Um, okay. For, but it might be four three, which would mean you'd need um, four plus four on three, on three uh, dice. On three yeah, dice, yeah, yeah, yeah. So four okay. up on three so, dice. So sliding scale in two directions. I'm yes. going to roll so yeah. many ones. This is going to be hilarious for all involved. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's okay. Not for no, the rest of the no, party. There's no critical failures. It's all good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. The other little thing there is your natural awareness is just kind of your general awareness of. Mm -hmm things around you and what goes goes noticed or unnoticed. Val's isn't great. Um, uh, yeah, then you have your talents, which each of them will have kind of a, a species bonus. So um, your Stormcast Eternal um, has their own species bonus. Your Sylvanith will have one where they're armored. Uh, humans have one, that kind of thing. And then your various talents, each of which will do different things. Mm -hmm. uh, and then down the bottom on the combat abilities, the way uh, combat works is it's a comparative difficulty. So you have your body, uh, or sorry, you have uh, melee, accuracy, and defense. So melee there is the column with the hammer. Accuracy is the kind of crosshairs, and defense mm -hmm. is the shield. So it rates from poor up to extraordinary on those. So what you do is if you're making attack and Val's att melee is good, if someone's um, defense is average, then it's easier for Val to hit them. So it would be a three. So if you look to the bottom right there, uh, on the sheet, you can see the uh, the attack DN, and how they compare against each other. Mm. So, if there's one step, if you're one step higher, uh, it's DN three. Mm -hmm. If you're one step lower, it's DN five. If you're two steps higher, it's two. If you're three steps, yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, it means that even no matter how bad you are, you can always hit on a six, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which which is which is good. Yeah. Um, and there's always a chance to miss because you can always get ones. Um, oh, I will. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, initiative is where you act in combat, like like a lot of other systems. Uh, Soulbound uses static initiative, so you're just ordered how uh, uh, whoever has the highest initiative. Uh, armor, you when you get take damage, the armor reduces the amount of damage you take. So if you take five, if you get hit with five damage, Vel has three armor. Vel would only take two damage. Mm -hmm. um, the metal it allows you to take extra actions and things. We'll get into that when we're actually playing through the game. Mm -hmm. uh, often used to power miracles or prayers for the priest type characters. And then your toughness is uh, kind of your health. Uh, it's It can come and go very easily. Um, I kind of liken it to, to a shield that recovers when, when you take a short rest. So Vela's nine toughness. 
it's when your toughness goes down then you start to take serious you take wounds um so toughness is easy to get back um wounds are not wounds take a much longer time to uh to get back so it, it becomes a bit of a war of attrition so you know you might take a wound in one fight which isn't a big deal but when you get to the next fight your wounds start ticking up um you might have your toughness mm-hmm. back but your wounds don't so mm-hmm. wounds come back or sorry your toughness comes back your wounds don't really come back mm-hmm. okay and then we have a handy dandy sort of quick reference for the players on the right there explaining yeah absolutely some of what's there um, mm-hmm. in a, a fairly accessible form so mm-hmm. that is what we're going to be playing with more or less Mm. Um, although not her. Ben, do you want to kick us <laughs> off with who you're playing? Yeah, sure. So uh, I'm going to be playing as Zan Bimir, uh, who is the Excelsior War Priest. Uh, so you may recognize that character from back in Silver Tower, that kind of model aesthetic and that art file. So I'm just going to mm. hold it up as well. There you go. There's me. Hello. <laughs> and I'm just not, I'm not here just by myself. I also have Tola, the loyal Griffhound, who's going to be bounding into combat with me and keeping me safe and all sorts of fun things. So yeah, that's going to be great. <laughs> Don't we'll dig up the gash. Yeah. Yeah. Just I'm, so. the pet, I'm the pet class. <laughs> oh, bad puppy. Bad bird puppy. And Justin, you're going to be playing? Uh, if I'm saying it right, uh, Darark. Darark, yeah. Uh, I am a, playing a Kurnoth hunter, so I've got a bit of a ranger great weapon fighter feel to my character. Also very friendly with animals, gets on very well with them. So Ben, I'm probably going to be talking about you behind your back to your griffhound. Fair enough. Said, if, you, if you ever hear it snickering in the background, I've said something funny. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't give yeah. me enough treats. <laughs> <laughs> I, if push comes to shove, you can always set your griffhound on a squirrel that lives at the scratches. I'm yeah, not saying, I, well, I'm not saying yeah, that but, Derek is bad, but you're infested. You're with rodents. Well, no, no, I have a squirrel and I have an owl. They're both infested. very friendly. They're very friendly <laughs> and they're very helpful. It's like dandruff. That's what that is. And <laughs> no, that's in autumn when my leaves fall. <laughs> I'm going to be playing Imran Silger, uh, which is an Adnath Deepkin caster. So she is going to be the soul of the party in more ways than one. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so that's our merry little band. So, Emmett. Mm-hmm. Where are we then? So um, you find yourself or have been in the, the city of Brightspear for a number of weeks. Um, you were, your binding was sent here by, uh, assembled by Sigmar and sent to the, the newly reclaimed city of Brightspear. Um, unlike many of the other cities of Sigmar uh, throughout the realms, which are usually built around the realm gate and are, you know, the Stormcast journals go in, uh, claim the realm gate and then build out a city from there. Brightspear was an existing city um, of the Aglaraxian Empire, which were this ancient majocracy from the Age of Myth. Um, mm-hmm. The city had been taken over by the, or had been overrun by the forces of Sinch for centuries. Um, and for some reason, uh, Sigmar sent the, his Celestial Warbringers, the Stormcast Eternal Celestial Warbringers, to reclaim the city, uh, which they did, and have started uh, founding a new city. So you, you have this ancient city that is um has multiple tiers so you have like this upper tier that slowly rotates and has this massive orrery around it each with these spokes coming off surrounded by uh, with a globe on the end that each which represents one of the mortal realms including a ninth uh, to represent the realm of chaos which has been shattered and broken when the city was retaken um and then you have the lower tier which is kind of in the shadow of the upper tier um and it has that old aglaraxian architecture quite unusual um and haphazard constructions lots of different places of learning and, and weird experimentation um with even architecture and, and how the city was built um beyond that you have what is the new city which is still part of the lower city but it started to be built out in that more orderly fashion of uh, of the forces of order so these concentric rings with really high walls and, and trying to uh, claim parts of the city as we move outwards um, so you were sent here to um, try and relight the beacon of Bright Spear, the tall spear at the center of the city. Uh, you did so during the events of Faltering Light. Um, <laughs> spoilers for, for those who uh, haven't played it, but you discovered that in truth there actually is a realm gate uh, beneath Bright Spear. Um, but unlike many of the realm gates throughout the Mortal Realms, this one seems to have been man-made and was actually constructed by the Aglaraxian Empire from uh, all different types of realm stone, including 
realmstone from Akshi and all the other realms, which is uh, crystallized magic. Uh, that is the essence of, of that realm, uh, but also includes uh, warp stone, which is full of lovely chaos energy. Um, <laughs> So yes, I won't spoil exactly what happened in that for those who didn't play it, including yourselves. But you have learned that uh, this seems to be why Sigmar wanted the city, that the there is a realm gate beneath it. Um, but the city itself is um, run by the uh, Lord Arcanum Salonia Gravewing, who is the Lord Arcanum of the Celestial Warbringers. She is currently overseeing the city, but the Grand Conclave is expected to take over, which is... Um, a conclave made up of the people of the city, which is normally how the cities of Sigmar are run, uh, based on the Grand Conclave in uh, in Azir, which I believe has 144 seats. So let's do quick maths: 12 times 12. That's whatever it is. <laughs> um, the Brightspear Grand Conclave isn't quite at capacity. It's it there. It doesn't need to be at 144. But as the Grand Conclave was ready to take over, the Necroquake happened, thus wiping out a lot of the Conclave. So until then it would seem Salonia is in charge, which is a little bit unusual, but has caused some tension. Um, but regardless of that, you have, having saved the day, uh, you have been sent to basically the Guardians of Brightspear. Um, the Stormcast Eternals who took the city initially are needed elsewhere in the never-ending battles in the Mortal Realms to push back the forces of chaos. There is a skeleton crew of, Stor of Stormcast here, um, and you are expected to kind of be the, those next level warriors to protect it. Um, there are plenty of uh, free guild regiments of, uh, uh, that look after different parts of the city. Um, there's some fire slayer mercenaries who help guard the city. There's ironwell arsenals filled with cannons and, and that kind of thing. But even at that, that's not enough. So we needed some uh, soulbound, super powered mortals to, to assist the city as well. Um, so of late, the city has been unusually quiet, you would say. The um, but there there has been a worrying um, threat to the city, where the hanging gardens, which are these uh, this large almost trestle that hangs off the upper tier, it's huge, couple of hundred feet long gardens that is used um, to uh, you know purify the air around the city and also feed the city with with fresh food. Fruit and fruit and vegetables and and that kind of thing. The um, some of them have started to wilt and die. Um, no one quite can understand why. They they are fed by an irrigation system which seems to be working, but the plants seem to still be dying on the vine. Mm -hmm. So you have been asked to look into this. Um, the only clue you have at the moment is that people have started to hear unusual sounds coming from the hanging gardens each night but usually after it passes uh, over the area known as Crookhaven in the city, which is a um, notoriously dangerous part of the city. Uh, once the, 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 I should <laughs> explain that, the city slowly rotates the upper tier to match the movement of the realms. So you have the, the orbs gradually rotating. So it over the course of a day, it will make a full rotation. So when it gets past, when it passes over Crookhaven, afterwards, it seems to be then this is when when things are uh, are affecting the the hanging gardens, um, that is the lo only lead you have. But uh, Lord Arcanum Gravewing has asked you to seek it out as a matter of urgency. Um, mm. The actual gardens themselves are tended by a branch witch of the Sylvaneth, who has gone missing, uh, and, and, and no one can find. Uh, in her stead, a another Kernoth hunter known as Redleaf has taken to guarding and patrolling the uh, the hanging guards themselves um, and is pretty much just stays there uh, perpetually, but particularly at night is, is kind of ever watchful. Um, so yes, that's where you've begun. You you would more than likely begin your investigations towards the uh, Crookhaven, the lower part of the city for, for anyone who has the map to hand, it's the blue bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yes, um, is there what would you like to do? Is there any actions you would like to take or where would you begin your investigations? Hmm. Well, uh, oh, go on, go on. Go for it. Um, obviously, we know that the, we're seeing some sort of issue whenever it goes over Crookhaven. I would suggest we go to the gardens first at that time um, because I want to see if there's anything arcane or, or magical causing it. Yeah. Uh, in that way, but at least we'd know for definite that there is a connection between 
the gardens and Crookhaven rather than it just being um, a false lead for us to follow. It would also give uh, Dryak the opportunity to speak to Redleaf and see if he knows anything about the missing um, protector of the gardens, I suppose. I can also take uh, my squirrel and Mel when we get there and ask them to sort of like scout the area for me. Yeah, could do that. Yeah, if we wanted to go to the gardens first, I suppose. Yeah, um. I, I agree <laughs> with this. Or, or is Crook, Crookhaven better? I don't know which one. I think for information gathering, we've we've got a, a couple of potential leads in the location and the guardian that's there. Cool. In that case, then, I suppose we'll, we shall head up to the gardens first before we investigate Crookhaven, I suppose, just to see if, well, you can get any leads out of Redleaf, I, I guess. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. Sure. We, do, we do want to time it for yeah. when it's yeah. passing over Crookhaven. So if that means waiting until... <laughs> Immediate death. <laughs> you know. I mean, who knows? There might be a bad smell. You know, there's maybe just... We see some magical energy flowings. I sure, do yeah. have the witch sight. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, can do. Uh, so you make your way to the upper tier um, uh, and can head across to where you know the gardens to be um, to be situated. The upper tier is definitely much much more well to do. Almost, it's um, a lot of the buildings here have been rebuilt using uh, white marble stone from Azir. Um, rebuilding on the old structures of the Agrax Empire or, or, or uh, destroying them completely uh, and building new, more uh, Sigmarite structures. Um, the, a lot of the buildings have been adorned with the, the Twin Tail Comet and, and uh, that kind of uh, iconography. Uh, there's plenty of people moving around wearing this kind of light silks uh, to, to stave off the action heat. Um, it, it is busy enough. There's um, And you can see Somewhat of a military present, but the, the free guild are much quieter or much much more subtle here, I suppose. Um, and there are, you know, still some seven to eight foot tall stormcast eternals wandering around, which uh, which is likely to deter a lot of uh, of the more seedy elements from venturing to the upper city. Um, but you can make your way to the edge of uh, the upper tier, and you walk towards it. The there are trees growing up from the edge of the um, the disc, effectively. Mm -hmm. um, kind of beautifully green and blossoming in the action heat, which is uh, quite surprising. Um, the a, a walkway has kind of been constructed that leads down, almost like that fire escape kind of lattice running across it that you can make your way up and down. There's um, ladders and, and steps to move between levels. Um, each level is with, with different variety of, of plants and, and um, flora on them. Um, some towards the upper tier kept for almost decorative purposes, more than likely for the, the, the wealthier of the city who wish for that kind of thing. Um, but a lot of it is given over to more practical things like um, you know, root vegetables and fruits and all that kind of fun stuff that, that you can't quite um, get in the dry action heat. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, upon arrival, I will attempt to convey to my squirrel and my owl that I would like them to just go out and begin to explore the area to see if they can see anything that might guide us to, to something that's maybe telling us what's wrong with the place a little bit. Sure, yeah. I, I, will, I will let, uh, I will usher for Tola to follow them and scout on the ground as they're up in the, the, the boughs of trees and things like that. Well. He, just, he just starts peeing on everything. Very <laughs> and and just does like the Picard uh, <laughs> hair thing. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. While um, they're unleashing the wilderness on the wilderness, I will, <laughs> I will go to the center of the gardens uh, and then just start to slowly scan the area to see if I can see any uh, changes in the winds of magic or if there's anything untoward coming from a specific direction. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the 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 squirrel and uh, and owl, I believe. I can't even yes. remember the illustration. Mm -hmm. yes. um, the squirrel races off and starts clambering up through the various bits of trestle and up and down the the trunks and vines hanging up and down. The uh, the owl slowly circles, making its way in behind and and around. Um, uh, the, the owl will be able to return to you and um, inform you, or you you would glean from it. Um, the location of Redleaf, who seems to be towards the lower part of the the hanging gardens, um, 
similarly, uh, Tala would move through and kind of be, be, be sniffing around. I think Tala has an awareness there if you want to give me a, a, a mind awareness test for Tala. So yeah, sure. say on fours and let me know how many, how many you get. Okay. Mind awareness, so that's 3d6. Is it fours, was it, yeah? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, two successes. Um, yeah, Tala moves through and is it, kind of distracted by all the new sights and sounds and smells. Um, would likely notice um, after a while the scent of slight rot or decay. Um, kind of one of the, the outermost columns, uh, if that makes sense. The, the vines and plants there do seem to be withering a bit and kind of um, starting to blow, uh, bloat and blister a bit in the in the sun. Um, they're kind of rotting on, on the vine. Um, Imran, as you make your way to the center, kind of working your way down along the various different ladders and stairs and, and, and that kind of thing, you get to the, the, the center of the hanging gardens. You can kind of open up your senses to the, uh, the, the winds of magic. Um, I suppose almost consciously or subconsciously, you try to turn that off a little bit as you're wandering around to not be overloaded with, um, with sensation. The... Um, the, the winds of magic in the in the mortal realms, uh, you you would kind of see these different little motes to reflect the different kind of the schools or, or realms of uh, of the mortal realms. The uh, Akshi is obviously just has a latent these kind of bright, vibrant orange motes that just drift around just the n very nature of the realms. Um, you would know as you if you were to move further towards the edge of the realm where it gets even more concentrated, they would grow brighter and stronger and almost be blinding. Mm -hmm. um, where you are now, though, kind of as you as you open up your senses to it, you see just these vibrant, almost like firefly-like, bright, vibrant green moths just flowing around and moving through with the um, uh, the the red that kind of just lingers there. Um, these are there's obviously a lot of um, jade magic that has been used here, and you would know that there are a number of wizards from the college who do regularly pass through here, maybe once a week, and kind of imbue the gardens with essence there there is an irrigation system but it's kind of it's almost topped up by uh, to ensure the the stability of it by these um, jade battle mages or, or wizards that come through here to to work through it if you want to actually give me a yeah mind awareness test um i would say yeah, dm5 and let me know how many you get one one um, better than average yeah, you, you would um, notice that there are, as you move towards the, the kind of almost rotten column, the, uh, the, the vibrant green lights or motes of uh, magic do dwindle slightly um, mm -hmm. or are not really um, taking, taking root, pardon the pun, in the, in the plant life here. Um, but beyond that, you can't really see why that would be the case. But there doesn't seem to be. Um, it's almost like an oil and water thing where they aren't really latching on to to the mm. the plants themselves to kind of imbue mm. them with that life. Mm. Okay. I shall make my way back to my companions then. Mm. I'm assuming, although I can't work out exactly why it's happening, it it does appear to be a magical effect. I suppose if if jade wizards are coming in to top this up on a regular basis then we would expect this to all be perfect yeah pretty much yeah it, it should be growing even more vibrantly uh, honestly it should, it should be performing above uh, expectations when 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 uh, when you come back zan sort of turns and says um if if the if the the branch which has gone missing then maybe there has been some kind of connection there between her disappearance and what is happening here. There may also be some issue with the manner of her disappearance. If it was potentially a violent one, then perhaps the trees and plant growth around here is reacting to such a thing. It's certainly possible. Has anybody spoken to Redleaf yet to see what he has to say about her disappearance? Not yet. My isle has found him. Uh, <laughs> everything in nature has its roots. Perhaps we'll find it with him. Lead the way, then, Darak. I will just yeah. walk off towards him very slowly. I will follow Darak's footsteps. Same. Yeah. 
Uh, cool. You can make your way down through the uh, the hanging gardens towards the bottom. Um, and sure enough, quite quickly, um, you spot red leaf. Who, who stands out simply uh, for the fact that he has um, bright red leaves, almost with some, <laughs> like cherry blossoms almost running through them. Um, as you see him, he has, similar to yourself, Derek, he has a long um, bowl made curved from wood with the, the, this... Uh, almost like five foot, six foot tall, <laughs> a great bow type thing, mm-hmm. um, and a larger blade on, a, on his back. Um, as he looks around, he would see you and kind of kirk its head, his head. He has, you know, those those harsh fi- f- um, visual features of the Sylvanith, uh, which creak slightly as they, as they move. Uh, he doesn't seem to pay much attention to the other two, but as you walk up, he kind of, nods slowly with the kind of like the bark kind of creaking and just kind of keeps his his eye out uh i'll look at him and say we've come seeking the source of the sickness in this area when did it begin where did it come from which tree was affected first uh he kind of looks at you and quirks his head joy branch disappeared two sunsets ago um and he kind of like slowly moves like follow and just kind of that kind of like slow plodding gait um towards sure enough towards that column of the slightly slightly decayed um plant life uh as we're walking i'll look across at him and ask uh, what was her health like before she disappeared was she well um, he kind of nods like, well, filled with the gifts of the Ever Queen. Mm. Um, he kind of leads you to the to the column and kind of just hold, slowly moves his hand out and gestures. Mm. And you can see, sure enough, as you move further down the column, it's almost getting more and more wilted and decayed. But then towards the, the very base where it is, it's almost like it's uh, it's completely petrified. Uh, it's just white and all nutrients and life have drained out of it. And it, it it's just this white gray. You can see even like when a strong wind blows past, it kind of like uh, cracks and splinters into ash that just mm-hmm. uh, drifts into the air. Uh, I will reach my hand out towards it to see if I can perhaps sense the, the life force within it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, give me a soul awareness test. Uh, so let's do dn4 let me know what you get awareness zero so just uno dice no dice <laughs> one dice oh one dice great yeah i got a one no good i got a one <laughs> um you kind of reach out to touch it and sure enough as you do it pretty much like cracks and breaks and just turns to ash and drifts away um there's no real sense of life to it at all it is uh dead and unrecoverable you would imagine mm. I will look to my companions and just tell them the life has fled from this branch. Mm. Uh, Zan will look up at uh, Redleaf and bow respectfully and be like, um, you speak of Joy Branch, the uh, the, the branch witch. Um, do you know the circumstances of her disappearance? Was there a- any, any sign of what happened uh, two two nights ago? Um, he kind of like moves to you and almost towers over you, just looking down on you, not purposely intimidating, just kind of <laughs> due to his sheer yeah. size. Um, he, uh, but he kind of like turns his head to Tala and quirks and al- almost seems to smile. Um, he um, he kind of shakes his head slowly. I was beyond the walls. I returned to find her missing. Mm. Um, and he kind of looks, I suppose, to both of you. Um, uh, he's like, mm, here, uh, he kind of moves closer into the the branches and pushes them aside, and you can see they're kind of like on a metal frame that has like these, these, a lot of holes in them, basically. And they um, find that you would know it's essentially an irrigation system with water flowing through it. I'm sure if the water is still flowing, but it it doesn't seem to be doing anything. It's just kind of trickling down and just kind of falling to the ground and drying out. Mm. Uh, my character will quite low to the ground now, so you're about maybe like 20, 10 or 20 feet off the ground towards the lower tier. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as it gets around to a certain point, there are like basically like platforms where you can get off uh, <laughs> if, you, if you want. Yeah. Uh, my character will look across at Red Leaf and ask, 
can you remember what uh, position the city was in when you returned? Um, do you mean like rotation wise? Yeah, which sort of uh, area of the city it would have been over when he returned and found she was missing? Um, he kind of quirks his and looks up. Uh, Haish was in ascendancy. He kind of turns towards the the um, the spheres that rotate, and you can see like Hish and Olgu kind of rotate around each other. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, he he would basically be implying it was about sunrise um, mm-hmm. uh, as the, they were kind of cresting over one another, bypassing each other. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, he would have come back at a, a sunrise. Okay. Uh, Zan's just gonna try try something. So he looks up at Redleaf and he says, um, "Would you permit me to try and use the?" the light of Sigma to aid these plants. Maybe my healing powers gifted to me by the God King can help you. Um, he quirks the head the other way. And he does pause for quite a long moment. <laughs> um, and kind of seems to look around at the rest of the city and uh, steps back. It's like, I will leave it to the God King to try. Seeming like, yeah, well, if my god can't do it, then... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, Darak's basically giving him the side eye right now. Mm. S- Sigmar's, Sigmar's, number one, Sigmar, Sigmar's number one fan here. Yeah. You're embarrassing so. me in front of the other Sylvan. Give me you can, give me you I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it a go with my miracle healing spirit and see if anything happens. So, uh, so it's a DN5-1. So that's... Four successes. There we go. Nice. Yeah. I wasted that roll. Um, <laughs> uh... <laughs> yep. In the heat of battle, you will all get one hit point back. <laughs> yeah. <time> back. <laughs> um, you, sure enough, like feel the power of Sigma kind of flow through you and towards this the plant life. You've never really tried to use it on, I suppose, plant life rather than, than people, but it should yeah, yeah. pretty much have the same effect. Not quite as... Uh, effective as like one of the miracles of Alariel or prayers of Alariel or the jade wizards might be able to do um, but the magic just seems to wash into it uh, or, or the, the holy power seems to wash into it and not again not really take effect and just almost almost like it's repelled to like the kind of oil and water type situation where it just seems to flow around it and almost ignore it as if it's not a living thing well, this is most disconcerting if the power of Sigma can not even help. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let me just try my hammer <laughs> just real quick. <laughs> a little bit of wrath. <laughs> uh, Darak's going to look up at Emeron and ask, what does the water tell you? What does the water tell me? Is that if you put your hand in it, you'll get wet? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very eyes way of viewing things. <laughs> You you are the water mage, so it's not how that works. It's not it's how an eth- it's that an etheric works. sea, thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> what I will say before we go is uh Redleaf, have you noticed yourself suffering any effects since you've decided to become guardian Ooh. of this place? You've been here for two full days. Is anything else affecting you or is it solely the uh, the plants within the gardens that seem to be suffering. Uh, he kind of quirks his head as, it, as if it had never occurred to him to think of this. Um, and so I, said, mm, I am unaffected, but some of the animals and grubs that have resided here have left or died. Hmm. I would, I would suggest that we descend down into Crookhaven then, if that seems to be where the source of this strangeness is coming from. We are over it now, I believe. So mm. we could descend. Um, can we look down to see where the lowest point of the infection is and sort of trace where it would go through Crookhaven? Uh, yeah, it, it's pretty much like the bottom part of it is definitely like grey and uh, white and um, dead mm. towards that, but the, the bottom as if it is, you know, has run down to it. Mm. Um, would it would it point to any like location within the lower area where it might be coming from? Um, it'd be hard to tell because it passes over so many, but uh, mm. it, I suppose, you know, you would have various different points that potentially people could try and 
jump on or leap to it um, from some of the, the taller buildings maybe or even throw something or mm. um, that kind of thing um, towards it. Uh, it. It would be hard to tell the Crookhaven is a bit of a jumble and tangle of buildings and alleyways, okay. which is why it's favoured by criminals. Um, it, it, it's easy to get lost there and the uh, the free guild guards don't tend to frequent it as much um, leaving it to the uh, a gang known as the Vitrolian Vit- Redcaps who are, uh, are a gang on the rise who have, have been left almost police the, the district themselves I suggest that we descend down into Crookhaven and ask the good people of that portion of the city of what they think and if that is not the case then we shall crack some heads. Moment. I Thank Bradley for his counsel. Uh, he nods. And head off towards the nearest uh, step-off point, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna he, uh, he just says, I first. will remain here. And that's you. And just kind of turns back to his vigil. Mm-hmm. Notice, Derek, he was not infested with squirrels. <laughs> I need to get my squirrel before we go. <laughs> <laughs> your, yeah, your squirrel comes skittering back eventually after after a couple of. Uh, well, you can't whistle because you don't have lips. It's got uh, the... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just make a, a come hither rustling. Mm. Yeah, uh, Tala immediately chases it. Squirrel. Mm. Um, mm. But yes, you can uh, make your way down into into Crookhaven. You may or may not have been through here a few times. Um, Zan is actually from Brightspear, so mm-hmm. so may know the area a bit more. Uh, may have tried to preach the word of Sigmar here at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, there are there are a number of um, locations and things around here. But as you descend uh, kind of onto this rickety step that leads down into Crookhaven, <coughs> which wouldn't be the most popular. Um, place to to leave the the hanging gardens um you do know other parts of the city there's kind of there's almost restaurants um that the at the, the hanging gardens pass over um but but not here um the <laughs> the city is it's in the shadow um of the upper tier pretty much throughout the entirety of the day unlike other parts of the city um the the light of hish doesn't really get here so it leaves this perpetually shadowed um, part of the city with tangles of alleyways and, and rundown houses and buildings and things like that. So perfect, perfectly suited for uh, gangs of thieves and, and, and criminals to, to reside. Uh, do I know a particular tavern or uh, that, that I have frequented before to deliver the word of Sigma that was a little bit more receptive to my calls or... They didn't uh, immediately oh, throw right. tankards at your head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How yeah, I mean, can like... humans live in such squalor? I say yeah. as I make sure I deftly step between Zan up front and Dry at the back, <laughs> being in the middle of the little, little conga line we've uh, created. Mm-hmm. I mean, Dark is going to hang at the back, of course, and just remember the time when Zan turned to him and went, Do you want to know how I got this scar? <laughs> <laughs> Um, the there wouldn't be too many places around. There's um there's a gambling den called Valor that but that moves around the city. Um, it's actually right. quite hard to find. You have to be in the know to actually find it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's one pub you know possibly might have information, but is might be the roughest pub in in Brightspear and, 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 and Crookhaven <laughs> and therefore Brightspear, um, which is called Wormfoots. Okay. Um, as okay. well, but uh, other was, than that, there's. Was I right in hearing that we'd, we'd there had been sort of like cries heard from Crookhaven at, at night? Was it? Uh, yeah, noises and, noises. and sounds <clears throat> um, of some sort that you're not quite sure about. Okay, uh, Zan, being the pragmatic individual that he is, will um, find the nearest citizen <laughs> who doesn't look too. Uh, annoying, and um, we'll go up to him, point his hammer at him, and be like, You, citizen of Brightspear, we have heard of strange noises down here in Crookhaven during the night. Can you tell us of this? And he's going to purposely try and look as imposing as possible with a dra- Darak behind him and a, you know, either a deep kin by the side as well, a soul stealing yeah. elf. So, yeah. <laughs> um, 
the person who's kind of like a maybe middle-aged man with a receding hairline and the kind of graying salt and pepper stubble kind of like turns his head up to you like, uh -huh. it kind of looks you up and down at the vestments um uh what what did you say priest strange sounds here in crookhaven strange goings on do you know of any um he kind of uh, best not to listen uh, you, you can't be a witness if you don't hear or see anything and he kind of like is immediately moving to go away he's like no i have none of this <laughs> sigmar is always a witness citizen you will come back and answer my questions <laughs> Uh, he's going to um, lean forward and put his hand down on his head, just stopping him from moving and pull him gently back, <laughs> look down at him and just growl. Just... Uh, he looks utterly terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Not even going to make it roll. Just no. Um, he uh, he's, I kind of shakes it. Uh, lights. Well, some, there's usually screams, but um, the. Uh, I, I mean, that's just strange sounds, isn't it? Um, the, 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 there's been noises coming from uh, under. And he kind of looks down and, and you should have, you can see it's kind of nearby. There's like drainage grates, effectively. Um, there's uh, uh, sounds and, and lights from under there. Um, I, uh, that's all. A, a kind of like uh, like still holding his head <laughs> <laughs> like just <laughs> yeah uh dara's gonna look at him and just ask who knows the roots of this place um he poor random civilian <laughs> yeah poor random oh, they always get it yeah, yeah. um at least i'm not shaking the lies out of him that's what normally oh, happens yeah. um the <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Try one of the pubs or um, Ifram in the, the smithy. He might know. Hmm. May the God King go with you. Your information has been helpful. Darius just going to lift him up a little off the ground before he lets him go. <laughs> just, just, just like, don't get yeah. up. Just get his legs going and get him a, get him a good start. <laughs> 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 okay. So he's provided, was it Imran the smith, did he say? Uh, no. Ifram. If round, if think. Round. Mm -hmm. Hang on, and checking one. the pubs. Yeah. Well, we have a few leads here, friends. We could we could go and see this if round the Smith, or we could head up, make our way to Wormfoot's, and see if they know more. Although I would Do not, we... don't, I would not want to spend too much time there. Do we know where the Smith is? I would probably have an idea. I guess you could probably find it relatively easy. Yeah. 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 Well. Perhaps before we go attempting to gain insight from drunkards, we ask the man who may be sober. Are you sure I have met drunken Smith before? Does not end well. I'm, I'm going to assume he's probably not going to be drunk. I'm going to assume he's probably going to be in bed. Although in, in, in your case, I imagine the Ideneth probably think that all humans are drunkards probably. So, but yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I guess we'll head towards I would towards never say that out loud. Oh no, of course. Friends. Yeah. <laughs> I'll keep hold of my soul. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I'll make our way to Ifrans, I think, and see if um, he's indeed in. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, you make your way through some of the streets and, and you can see sure enough on a lot of the corners and the alleys and leaning out of buildings you're definitely being watched um whether being mm. followed or not it, you you can't tell um but your your presence has been noted here okay um i'm gonna yeah. I'm, I'm gonna bend down and sort of stroke taller and be like keep an eye out girl and, uh, sort of, um yeah. taller kind of like glares and looks around <laughs> um the uh Kind of after after a few more minutes of uh, harassing uh, by pa uh, uh, passersby, you can determine where the where uh, the cold steel smithy is, um, which is Ifram Smithy apparently. Um, you start to approach, and it has it's almost like a, there's a stone wall around it, or the remnants of one, uh, almost like it, it like you get around a house. Um, mm -hmm. And out the front, there's uh, like old reclaimed metal and and um that kind of thing kind of chucked in piles um and uh a, a, an anvil to one side and then there's kind of the, the larger building um you can't hear the sound of a forge 
um, and you just obviously there's no heat or, or anything. There doesn't seem to be any lights on in the in the actual forge itself. Okay, go and hammer on the door. Uh, Darak's gonna knock the roof. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm eleven foot four. True. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you walk up to the door and kind of like go to pound it, and the door just swings in. Um, and you actually notice that the the it it wasn't closed at all, um, and mm. the door just opens. And within you can see is part workshop, part home. Um, there's again a, like a workbench nearby with some smaller uh, blades and tools and things on it, um, and then a bed off to the corner, like uh, just with sheaths hanging off it, and you know dishes left over with unfinished meals and, and that kind of thing. Just uh, very much a, a bachelor's uh, <laughs> home office <laughs> kind of situation. Okay. Uh, right. Zan will slowly no, pick my way inside. Yeah, I'll let you go first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just it in looks, case. Like every, looks like everybody's gone from here. I just gently move stuff with my staff, just using the bottom of it to push aside filth and mess and dirt trying to work out what's happened because with all of the discarded plates and half-eaten food and that sort of thing my natural assumption is somebody took them away in the middle of a meal they didn't even have time to tidy up mm. yeah uh, if you want to give me a mind awareness test you can absolutely do that uh see dm4 and we'll see what how many we get on successes One. <laughs> nice. Um, Five dice have... every time, by the way. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Imran has a really high mind. Yeah. Um, the, uh, I, I, I rolled, I remember I was doing a test and I had like 86 and I didn't get above a four on something. <laughs> it was just preposterous. But uh, anyway, yeah, you, you have a look around. Uh, you can't see anything in particular. Um, you would notice there's like a small pouch with a few. Um, spheres uh or, or uh, files of aquagranis um kept in them uh, and a little dropper with them as well for measuring out drops um the I'll take that in case we find the poor smith later and they're yeah. injured yeah I'd say 17 <laughs> drops there um you can't see anything in particular as you're looking around um you do notice you kind of feel a, a, um the the actual back door itself to the place seems to not be locked either. Um, it's closed over, but not locked. Um, mm. But uh, beyond that, you can't really make out any signs of a struggle or anything like that. There are some things here you would expect him to bring with him if he was going anywhere, such as the the money, um, mm. uh, non haven probably a blade, but there's a couple of weapons around, so he might have one with him. Mm. Uh, I'm going to let Tola sort of sniff around, see if they can they can sniff anything out from inside the room. And I've got my Zan taking his hammer out just in case. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Meanwhile outside Darak is gonna just scout around the dwelling to see if there's any signs of, you know, struggle or anything like that, any scuff marks on the ground. Oh yeah, you're yeah. not gonna get inside here, are you? <laughs> no, true. I don't fit. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So Darak, if you want to give me either mind awareness or mind survival, if you want to kind of look for footprints and stuff. Uh, it's four dice. And Tala can do the same, give me mind, uh, mind awareness. I got two. Nice, okay. Um, uh, yeah, what, you, was the, what was the DN, sorry? Oh, DN4, sorry, yeah. DN4. Uh, two successes for me, for Tala as well, so. Um, Tala kind of moving through would kind of give that like, sniff of her beak, um, and would move towards the, the front door and then the back door and kind of be sniffing at the um, where the handle would essentially be. Uh, kneeling down to see, you would actually see the wood and metal has uh, been burned or melted away. Um, oh. And that's how the, the door was open and just kind of pushed over. Um, oh, okay. Derek, as you're outside, you kind of you move around and kind of move around to the back. Um, and there's another smaller workshop out there. Uh, you start to hear like a um, kind of rhythmic banging and clanging, very, very muted, but you can't quite make it out. Um, as you move around, the, you can actually see the workshop is slightly caved in on itself a little bit. And looking within it, you can see that beneath it, there's actually a huge sinkhole um, mm. that leads down. And uh, from what you can tell, the very muted sound is coming from 
down there. Um, as you notice that, you hear a loud, you hear kind of this, this um, piercing scream um, from back towards um, kind of where you where you were, mm -hmm. um, uh, or where you would have passed through a, a little while ago down down the streets. Uh, clearly, just gonna jog back casually to uh, have a look and see what's going on. Sure, yeah. Um, you uh, kind of look down, and you can see, um, kind of through the tangle of buildings, you can see there seems to be a, like a crowd moving uh, or gathering around an area, but you can't quite can't get a full view of it without um, from where you are, just because of the the nature of these kind of like jutting out, um, haphazardly put together buildings and architecture. Mm. Um, I will call to the other two inside the house. Something's going on. Get out here. And then yeah, begin I'll, to move I'll, towards it. Yeah, I'll follow Derek. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, you you make your way to um, kind of quickly down down the street and sure enough, push your way through the crowd. As you get closer, um, Derek in particular, you would see, you would, um, see Redleaf. Um, but as you get closer, you notice that he's not moving and his bark has actually turned white. Um, uh, as you move closer, he's kind of like mid pose, and uh, one of his arms has like snapped and fallen to the ground, and he's just turned like completely white, frozen in place, uh, completely petrified, and there's like I, I, pretty much a crowd around watching. Yeah. I mean, like I'm I'm gonna stop and hang back from him because I don't want to catch his cooties. <laughs> <laughs> I won't let the other two go out. inspect. We yeah, help uh, barge through the crowd uh, and and get to where the well eventually see Red Leaf petrified i guess um it, does there anyone uh, is there anyone like directly in front of red leaf at this point that looks like someone who spotted this no image? they're kind of giving him a wide berth people would be like sylvans would still be quite unusual and um, mm. so people would give them um a, a good bit of space they still are a quite alien uh thing to see in, in one of the cities uh, so as a rule, you would notice from being around Dirac, uh, Derek, people tend to move around him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, these, these people are kind of like backing away and kind of made a, a, a almost a circle around just to, to okay. go. Right. Okay. From from my vantage point of being taller than every single other person around me, can I see anyone trying to like sneak away? Uh, sure. Give me a mind, a mind awareness or soul intuition, whichever you would prefer. Uh, da, 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 just check. Yeah, I'm just going to go for the mind awareness. Uh, the N4, yeah. I got one of them. Nice. Um, as you look around, you can see there's, there's a couple of people around. A lot of people here tend to look a bit shifty. Um, <laughs> but um, they're also well used to seeing horrifying things. And a lot of them are like, oh, it's the, it's the new gossip. Let's go and take a look. Um, mm. You would notice as you look from top down, there are a pair of hooded figures that are kind of like slowly backing away through the crowd. Um, moving away, whereas a lot of other people seem to be moving forward towards us. Mm. Uh, basically, Darak will point out and go, you two stay where you are. And I'm hoping if they run, I'm basically going to be charging after them. Sure, okay. Um, the They look like uh, uh, pretty much beggars in, in rags, um, but they have this kind of sw slightly unusual gait. As you call out to them, um, one of them whips around to you and the hood comes back and you just hear this uh, kind of startled shriek uh, and you can see this long rat-like snout and fangs and these beady eyes. Um, the creature just lets out this shriek and both of them just dart and just run through the crowd and start running up the walls. From within the crowd as well, you see a number of, other, of these hooded figures just race down one of the streets um, and just start to run. Okay, uh, I'm gonna draw my great bow and try and just like pin one to a wall. Okay, cool. So what we have going on here is a chase scene. Um, Ooh, so yeah. there are particular things you can do in a uh, chase. So you have your quarry and your hunters. So you guys mm -hmm. are the hunters. Um, the So you can take three different actions uh, in a chase. First off is you can hold, hold your pace, which is basically you move at your speed as fast as you can um, to follow them. Um, you can slow down, which is you move and you take an action like uh, firing a bow or casting a spell or something like that. Or you can break off, which um, is just you give up the chase. Or it happens if you get knocked prone or restrained or any, anything like that, uh, or or mortally wounded. Um, so I'll let time. you guys 
I'll let you guys act in initiative or decide what you do. They are a couple of zones away from you. So we use kind of abstract zones, which are roughly about 30 feet. Um, but it's, it's generally broken up by um, natural breaks in the environment, like a doorway or, or, or that kind mm-hmm. of thing. Um, so what we'll do is we can start from the top of the initiative. Um, I will say because Imran and Zan couldn't see the figures, I'll let uh, Dara go first and then we'll start from the top again. Mm-hmm. Cool. Okay. Uh, so I'm basically going to go slow, aim with my great bow at one of them and take a shot. Sure, absolutely. Okay. So comparing against the DN, what's Dark's um, accuracy? Uh, accuracy is where my skills should be good. Um, it'll be down combat in the combat abilities. Abilities. Uh, Yes, my accuracy is good. Okay. So the good of runners, uh, defense is all oh, spoiler what they are. Whoops. Um, <laughs> oh, definitely not go to runners. Defense is, uh, is average. Um, technically means... squeaking, they're wall runners right now. D- true. Yeah. yeah. Um, technically squeaking. Uh, the so it's average, which is one step below you. So to hit him, you only need uh, you only need threes. So three and okay. up will hit. Okay. So my great bow is forty six mm-hmm. uh, with a focus of plus one. Yep. So I've got. All four land without using focus. Nice. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. And what's the damage? Uh, is damage one is one, one plus strength. One plus, one S. plus S. So S is the amount of successes you got. So you got four successes, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, you basically like draw one of your balls from your little quiver or quiverling that you have and just fire and it like arcs over everyone in the crowd. Uh, like Robin Hood style through the, the gap in the these twisting alleys <laughs> and just gets the, the Skaven in the back and just drives them into a wall because this thing is like a spear. You're basically firing a spear from your ball yes. and just drives it straight into the wall and it's just like face planted against it and slumps to the side. Uh, the other four don't even really notice and just keep running. Um, but yeah, that thing is dead. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the first people to show. <laughs> I beat myself. It's fine. Works <laughs> <laughs> for me. Uh, cool. Okay, so we'll go from the top of the initiative then, and 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 kick off the actual chase scene. So Imran would be first. Cool. So these are already outside of of my zone. Yeah. So they are um, a couple of zones away. I will find out because it's not be important for you um, with spells. Uh, so they would be. Five zones away from you. Okay. So in that case, I will give chase, assuming they're all moving in the same direction. Yep. Actually, let me just roll for a chase complication and see what happens. (laughs) That's not great. (laughs) Um, All righty. I should do that to start next time. Cool. Okay, so you're just going to give chase. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Um, okay, it's the gutter runner's turn. They are also just going to friggin' run. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. do, 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 do. Really quick. Okay. So the yeah, at the start of their turn, the um, a couple of them race up onto the roofs and start just running across the rooftops. Um, if you wish to follow them across the roofs and keep track of them, you will have to um, run along the rooftops to, to actually keep uh, keep after them. So from now on, it'll, you'll need a, a body athletics test to chase after them. Okay. Um, cool. So, Derek, it will be your turn now. Uh, basically, I am going to give chase. Uh, so basically, beat feet as quick as I can after the rest of them. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. You can absolutely do that. And then Zan. Uh, so Zan is going to follow the example of uh, of his comrades and follow them in a chase. But as he does, he's going to call out to Tor and point to the one that Darak shot and be like, "Pick up its uh, its scent, and then we'll follow them." Tora, go, and uh, then run after his friends. Yep, sounds good. Excellent. Okay, um, so back around to Imran as you kind of start to, to race um, after. Um, you can try and keep to the streets, but you'll probably start to lose them a bit, or else you can run along the, the rooftops, or you can do something else yourself. I will um, 
I'll attempt to get up onto the rooftops to uh, <laughs> give chase that way, and also means I have a better idea of where they are, including the ones below us. Mm -hmm. Do I get the impression I'm actually gaining any? Um, you're about keeping pace with them at the moment. Okay. Um, so you're probably within four zones, I would say. This is body athletics? Uh, yes. So six, oh, one. Good yeah. times. Good yeah. times. Yeah. Let me just get my one dice. <laughs> <laughs> five i do have focus oh i don't have focus on that so no no i would oh. increase that oh yeah. i slow yeah. down dramatically as i attempt to get up this wall yeah you try to clamber up and it's just it's not your thing it's not a. <laughs> uh, you're like I'll, I'll just keep to the streets um mm. as you kind of like grab and some of the roofs collapse a bit as you as you try to chase after them um the gutter runners you notice some of them like leap down um and Zan, you might also you're kind of coming up on um the uh oh my god what's the name of it wormfoots and the a few of the gutter runners like race through and kind of smash the door in and go running through um as they do you hear yells from within as the drunken patrons start shouting and basically just launching themselves at them and it's given enough to like fight to to get their way through so they start to slow down um so they would be within three zones of uh of, of ye now um, and it is Darak's turn now. Um, Darak is basically <coughs> just charging as quickly as he can to try and get into the pub. Can I make it in and do something, or can can I only make it in? Um, you're within three zones, so you could move and then take a sh another shot if you wanted. Um, but you're shooting into a crowd. Um, if you, I'm if fine you, with this. yeah, if you just race after them, you will catch up to within two zones of them. Uh, I tell you what, I think the wisest thing to do is just to bum rush them and just get in so i'm just running sure yep you can kind of get closer to them that sounds good uh so you're almost a zone away oh wow um cool and then zan it's uh tala is a little bit behind you having tried to pick up the scent um mm -hmm. and you can race along you'd be within three zones and um yeah Derek is uh, ahead of you do i obviously crookhaven is quite a a uh, wiggledy, wiggledy, windy place. But do yes. I know if there's like some back entrances to like Wormfoots and stuff that they might be coming out the other end of that I could sort of get? Behind? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll say you're from Brightspear. I'll let you make a, yeah. a quick, um, say, mind lore mind check. Lore. Uh, I'll say only DN3 because you're from here. On one dice. <laughs> you got it. You got this. More than 50 like shots. Four. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, you would actually know that there's a there's a quite a narrow alley that you could actually slip through and get around towards the back of of Wormfoots, where um, people often use to either slip away or to sneak in okay. on people that are in Wormfoots. So I'm going to run that direction, and because Imran was sort of struggling trying to climb up a roof, I'll bellow to her to sort of like follow me. But Derek seems to know where he's going. So <laughs> and Toller's on the on the task, so she knows what to do. So yeah, I'm going to run towards that alleyway and try and get through there. Sure. Uh, you, you basically look at the big hulking stick and turn to Tall and go fetch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nice. Yeah, that'll, that'll let you pretty much catch up with them next turn or catch up with a few of them. There's still there's two on the roof and two kind of on the ground running cool. through the tavern. Yeah. Um, moving back around then, Imran, it is your turn and following... Um, following Zan's advice, following... I will attempt to uh, pick myself up and dust myself <laughs> off as I run down the alley. Yeah, so you'd be within, even just with a move, you'd be within one zone of the, the Skaven um, if you wish to take another action. Otherwise, you can... If I if I can get within one zone, yep. I will attempt a Arcane Blast. Nice. Okay, which I think is DN4-1. Worst, DN6-1. But it, oh, it is every creature in the, the zone. Crowd. <laughs> well, that, I'm not doing it into them if I have, you know... So are you waiting for them to come out of the tavern or are you just yeah, like, oh. yeah, if, if I'm following down the side alley yeah, and they're trying to go through, I want to be in a position where, oh, if they're not through the, the, the tavern yet, then I'll just hold, I'll just go down. So we can be waiting on them coming out the back door, essentially. Oh yeah. You can fire it off as they come out and just do yeah, that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Fire it. Oh, yeah, yeah. As Zan sees Imran, he's like, and he notices that she's looking at the pub. I, I like to think that Zan pulls out like the soulbound code of conduct. And he's like, <laughs> no. <laughs> More of a set of guidelines. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah you're not going to like what happens next. <laughs> oh, cool. then, Silver Boy. 66. <laughs> Something. 
you want to roll for me there? Yep. I have to channel. Yes, so you're making a channeling test. So a channeling test, which can go horribly wrong. Everybody it knows can. it's a good yep. place to hear. <laughs> so Don't summon an endless spell, that's all. Oh, well, you know, I, I shall attempt my best. <laughs> I do have one focus in my channeling, so hopefully I'll get... Mm. All I need is one. Forward to this. On sixes. There's one. Oh, thank I God. do better than one. No, I can't do that. I'm not... Not even got a five in there to nudge. Oh, to two. At least you but, got one. One vote. But yeah. I got one. Yeah. Ice are betraying you. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you, uh, the the gunner is pretty much race out of the pub, having like shoved off a couple of people, and you hear these yells and shouts and um, bleeps uh, from within. <laughs> the, the, the the language is unpleasant. Um, they come running out, looking slightly haggard and relieved to be out. And just as they do, the um, what does your arcane blast look like? Oh, it's like uh, a slammed with a tidal wave or something. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> it's like it's very Aquaman esque. All of a sudden, a massive splash of water, just like uh, somebody turns a fountain upside down, just crashes down on top of them and then splashes out, <laughs> nice. giving us two drowned rats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they kind of like slam to the ground and just have yeah that horrible smell of drowned rat. Um, looking quite injured, managed to pick them off, self up and trying to to scamper away. But you are you are in the same zone as them now. Um, Derek, you're one zone away, um, either running through the pub. Are you up on the roof? Uh, no, I'm, I was literally running at the pub. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> through the pub, not gently, yeah. through the yeah. pub. I expect stones and boards and everything to go flying. Yeah. Unlike, to perhaps unlike fall down after we're done. They all get out of your way. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Run basically, blast, blast through the pub and swing for one of the rats on the ground. Yeah, you pretty much duck in. You feel maybe a couple of your branch, branches snap off. Uh, whether it hurts you or not, that's up to you. Um, but you bust through on the other side. Um, and you can... Yeah, you can use your whole turn to basically catch up with them for the for the next round. Um, that, that's, that's fair enough. Basically, I have blasted through and destroyed the pub, hopefully. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, it's not looking great. Uh, cool. And then, Zan, it would be your turn. Cool. So they're they're now on the ground, covered in etheric sea water. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna run into the their zone and give them a whack with my warhammer. So sounds good. So I'll do that as a charge action. So, oh, nice. So it gives me plus one d six, I think, for that. It does indeed. So, uh, so my melee is average. So. So your melee is average. Their defense is average. So you need fours. Uh, so that's three successes oh, nice. uh, for a damage of four in total with plus one. So, yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, so you basically race up and just as one of them's kind of picking itself up, that like s golf swing style hammer to the face, the scaven flies through the air, the nice slow motion arc slams into the wall and just crumples down just with its jaw going one way and the top half of its head going the other way uh, and just lies there still. The other just lets out this horrified squeak and goes to scramble away as quick as it can. Um, <laughs> Imran, it's your turn. Um, as the, the the last Skaven on the ground goes to run away, you would feel more than see two figures fly over you um, across the rooftops and continue scampering away. As, as I feel, you know, this sort of leap over the top of my head, I'll reach out and summon the cloying sea mists to choke the life out of all the little <laughs> skaven within my zone. So hopefully the I'm one on the ground the, the two leaping above me majestically. We might need one alive. Enfogged. Do need one alive. No, I'm keep glad. the servants of I'm chaos alive. <laughs> I need to beat the lies out of him. <laughs> two, four. Six of the finest dice. EN5 and needing three successes. Oof. Be lucky. Huh? You, were. you got this. Oh, I don't have this. Oh. <laughs> oh focus? Oh, <laughs> oh, focus won't help me. Oh, I got one yeah. success. So, okay. For those, for those following at home, the price of failure <laughs> is not great. If I yeah. fail a channeling test, I need to roll a number of d6 and consult the table below. The amount of d6 <laughs> is equal to the difference in the complexity of the spell and the number of successes I rolled. So two in this case, oh I assume. So yeah. <laughs> I need three successes, I got one. So I rolled two d6. All right. I imagine this is going to be amazingly good. 
Imran explodes. <laughs> the Six. spell is cast, and I'll let GM explain what is going to happen on this one. <laughs> Has the opposite effect of what was intended, so you fill their air with lungs. Um, so the, the <laughs> flowing seam is... I can't even remember what it does. Oh, God. Uh, uh, oh, I have it here, actually. It's, it's not great. I think. Um... It's, uh, it's smothers done, doesn't it? Sorry. Let me yeah, just... enemies inside the zone must make a DN4 uh, body test or become incapacitated. Excellent. So that's basically going to happen to you. Um, <laughs> I think Zan and Derek are in a different zone to you, so you're going to need to make that test. Oh, Zan, Zan can't be too far away because because if I was standing in the zone doing this and Zan was in front of me smacking one with his hammer. That's a good point. Yeah, I think you probably Zan should make it as well. You've convinced oh, yeah. me. It's, I yeah. it's only, only fair. <laughs> Derrickson's still in the pub. Let's say just yeah. a, a, about to come through the other side. That's that that that's fine. Uh, yeah. So what what what's the test? Uh, and have DM you muted yourself? DN four S. Oh, so the test. the successes. So let's say it's two. Uh, the amount of successes you missed. Okay, so that makes sense. So, so let it's me a body one test, body yeah. dice. Okay. Oh, nice. So you failed. <laughs> uh, and, and let me just see if I even got one success. I did get one success. Oh, technically, good. Technically, what's, I the, just... what's, the, what's the difficulty number to get with this? DN4-2. I've got two dice, two bodies. Good. I've passed with one. So, uh, yeah, I got one success. I, I crumple. You need two successes. On the floor. Ah, oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> you need two successes. Eyes um, roll back in my head. Yeah, Everything's you know a bit... That moment where you Fuzzy. try and take a drink of something and you breathe in accidentally, and it's just like, ah! <laughs> yeah. You uh, you both f- feel your lungs fill with this water and mist, and uh, as if you were drowning, but there's no air around you or, or no water around you. It has a peaty uh, taste. <laughs> um, you both start kind of like clutching your te- chest and, and and just fall to the ground, incapacitated, and therefore out of the chase. Um, well so, done. <laughs> Derek, it's your turn. So Derek, blasting through the back of the pub, sees the, the one hooded figure still on the ground and will attempt to disable them. What have you done to my friends? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah basically, it's, I'm going to attempt to grab it and lift it and just ram it into a wall and start screaming at it. What pestilence have you introduced to my lady's realm? Excellent. Ooh. Sounds Ooh. good. Um... Yeah, give me a body might, and it'll be versus their body might. Okay, its body is three. My might is one. I want to think that Zan looked at Imran as this, as all the horrible things unfolded, and went, "I knew you were wrong." Uh, so four, <laughs> four and up. Four and up. Uh, so I've got two. Yep, yeah. it got one. See so breath for breathing. So. You uh, grab it and slam it into the wall, and sure enough, you've. Uh, you have caught it. You've grappled it, if you so wish. So it can't run away. That's um, that's ah. that's fine. Okay, excellent. Right. So at that, I presume we are out of the chase. <laughs> well, apparently, yes. <laughs> My goal was to me. capture one the entire time. I'm sorry for all the murder. Uh, yeah. Whoops. That that spear I shot from my bow. I wasn't intended to kill. Um. I was aiming for the teal. <laughs> It's how um, many people it went through in the building behind. <laughs> oh, was running up at the time. Oh, in- I forgot Invincible to check that. Style. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Azan and Imran still out of it, or are they sort of coming to the? Uh, I think it lasts like a few seconds, so yeah, oh, okay. you'd, you'd be fine. Right. Yeah, pretty much, you would wake up uh, or kind of feel air rush into your lungs again and be able to push mm. yourself to your feet, your feet, and see Derek holding the scaven slammed against the wall, mm. still with patrons kind of looking out. Wanting like, to see, but not wanting to get near the... It sounds uh, like rubbing his throat and he's like, what foul pestilence did the Skaven bring upon us? Imran, <laughs> what was it? <laughs> they are wily assassins. <laughs> and I'm just leaving Indeed. it at that. <laughs> Derek, you have, you have captured one. <laughs> yeah, Dar- Derek is basically infuriated right now, screaming incoherently into the Skaven's face. It's squeaking incoherently right back back at you. <laughs> <laughs> this may be the weirdest uh, little section of roleplay ever, as we have a tree attempting to talk to a rat. <laughs> I the squirrel on the shoulder is like, goes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 hang on, because I have the animal fit friend's ability. 
I, so, I think a skaven's not an animal, but <laughs> they're <laughs> technically like... mortals corrupted okay. by chaos. Okay. <laughs> um, yes. So I presume you're trying to intimidate. I'm attempting to intimidate and interrogate the little bugger. Okay. Can you give me a soul intimidation test? And this will be um, an Apollo's test. So the way Apollo's test works, I should have mentioned, is basically the, the flat the the DN is four, and then whoever has the most successes wins. Right. Well, um, I have uno dice. Yeah, you can have advantage and disadvantage in it, depending on the situation, um, which changes the DN. So I'm going to say you have advantage simply because you've killed their friends and uh, slammed it into the wall. Okay. So you only need three and up to do this, and it will resist with its mind guile. I got a six, so... Oh, nice. Booyah. Well done. It failed. Excellent. So, one success. Um, yeah, are, are you asking anything or just generally throttling it? Uh... <laughs> I mean, like, what I screened first, what pestilence have you introduced into my lady's realm? Because I would assume the gardens, you know, Darak would consider that as a small piece of the Everqueen's realm within the city. Yeah. Um, it kind of seems like, uh, uh, let go, plant thing! Um, uh, just kind of like clawing at you with these like narrow, rotted uh, um, claws, that, which kind of break off in your in your hardened bark. Um <laughs> The uh, and then it kind of squeaks. Big brain has a plan for you. And it's just like wildly squealing and, and, and pulling at you and kicking. Uh, so Darak's basically going to lean in and with a growl just go where. Um, it, it has like this like light gray fur and it's kind of like pulling at its head when it can't like go and it's like the fur just comes out in clumps. Um, uh, it kind of like squeals like ah. Let go! Let go, plant thing! Um, yeah, give me a... That's, yeah, I'm going to say you can do body intimidation on this one because uh, that feels more fitting right about now. Okay. Uh, that'll be three dice. Excellent. Uh, I will say on threes as well. Uh, yes, yeah, six, five, five. The, oh, dice are, the dice are basically saying, yes, you're doing this. Meanwhile, Imran is trying to work out how to work fingers. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> the, the the Skaven squeals. Um, the uh, big brain Zeke he uh, has a plant rotter uh, kill you and like points at you uh, and kind of looks at these um, kill all man things and plant things. Uh, does either of you two want to shout uh, anything up at it while I'm intimidating the hell out of it? <laughs> Uh, Zan's going to step forward with his intimidating manner, um, uh, coughing up a little bit of seawater. <laughs> this is, what strange is this? Um, strange to reason. And he'll, he'll be like, um, where is this plant rotter, chaos fiend? And I'll make your ending swift. Um, yeah, absolutely. You can give me a uh, body intimidation or soul, depending on which you prefer. Um, I would say with advantage. And I think... Intimidating Manor gives you advantage again? It does, yes. So I'm going to say you have greater advantage, which means you only need twos. Ooh la la. Nice. Uh, that is four successes on four dice. So <laughs> Excellent. Um, it kind of squeals like, no, let me go. Um, and it, it says, I, I tell you how to find how to find Big Brain. Yeah, follow, follow symbols. And it kind of like starts to try and scratch the symbol into your bark, uh, Derek, as it's holding you. Uh -huh. um, which I your bark is too resistant. So it like throws its hand out to the wall and kind of like scratches this kind of inverse triangular symbol on okay. the wall. He's like, follow, follow, follow these uh, big brain. Um, uh, and then kind of like freezes, like, let go now. Darug basically slowly crushes its larynx. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, you can do that. Well, <laughs> and, and honestly, Darug has just seen another Sylvan F petrified oh, yeah, yeah yeah so he is taking no prisoners right now it, yeah, it would not feel right to let this skaven go yep uh it it up and dies um <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that works so yes um <laughs> yeah it's dead um can uh, we see oh. any of those symbols he's talking about um, you can give me a quick mind awareness uh, test uh, and see uh, if you want to kind of scout the um, 
the neighbor. Actually, what did... I think you got two on the awareness. You actually, uh, Derek, um, would have noticed one of the symbols at the smithy. Okay. Has, has Tola caught up with me again now? Has, yeah, has, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. right, yeah. <laughs> Give her a good pass on the head. Essentially, <laughs> uh, so given body. Kept chasing the other ones, so it's kind of up to you. Um, oh, um, well, I did tell her to just keep hunting them. Yep. So... Um, so I'm sure while, she'll come back at some yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. Tala could uh, come back a few minutes later and uh, basically yeah. lead you uh, as well. Um, I'm sure Tala leads you to the smithy through the mm-hmm. front door and back door and to the, um, cool. the kind of caved in. Um, uh, yeah, the smaller the workshop. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as we're on that way there, Zan turns to Imran, sort of walking through the the the, the blacksmith and stuff, and says. Are you quite all right, my friend? You seem to be incapacitated, same as I was by those Skaven. Some foul magic arose from within my throat. <laughs> I'll just cock one eyebrow, looking at Zan, and give a curt nod, and then just keep on walking. Hmm. The, the whims of the Ideneth are still uh, unfamiliar to me. <laughs> Clearly not her fault. We're all on the same team. <laughs> but yeah, we'll make our way towards that sort of hole that was dug down in on that kind of landslide that was sort of in the ground. The sinkhole. Yeah. Absolutely. Thankfully um, we have a digger with us. <laughs> <laughs> the um yeah, you can make your way back to the smithy and sure enough pushing your way through um to the the kind of sinkhole at the back. It does just kind of like that that um sloping shape leading down below and um, mm-hmm. there's quite a stench coming up from below uh you can you can make your way down if you wish uh doing so you drop down into what looks to be the bright spear sewers um you would know yourselves from your previous expeditions that there is actually below bright spear there there's kind of like the sewer level where the aggro actions you know have their um sewers and, and all that kind of stuff but then below that again is the actual undercity which is just this tangled maze of um like fallout shelter come laboratory um that is completely unmappable due to centuries of change magic overflowing the place um is there any light down here no there would not be Uh, okay i will i will break out my storm lantern did my kit (laughs) Uh, and light that with the fires of sigmar and hold that aloft so can do so um one thing i forgot to mention that uh, uh may become pertinent is you would uh, the group would have three soul fire um which allows you to do all kinds of awesome stuff like you can spend a soul fire to just max out a success uh, mm-hmm. before you even roll which will just give you sixes on everything um it can also stop you from dying which is uh which is very useful as well jerry those are yours <laughs> <laughs> I mean, based on I, how your I, dice has gone so far, yeah, I, 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 I gift them to you. <laughs> say, say nothing. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, uh, well, Zan will, well, and the rest of us, rest of us, I suppose, we'll see if we can see any more of those symbols on the walls that maybe are leading us deeper into the sewers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah, if you want to give me whoever, uh, or actually, I suppose the group actually can give me. Uh, mind survival awareness or lore tests to know your way around the sewers or the actual undercity um, or find tracks or find those symbols or whichever you wish Ooh. so uh, your choice we'll <laughs> it's one dice whatever I do so uh, it's four for me regardless of what I do yeah, so DN4 so this is a group to test so we'll put all the successes together Two. Uh, I got no successes there so. I got three excellent I don't know what it is. Sometimes my, my ruling is just janky and it's just, you win everything. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, you start making your way through the sewers and sure enough, it snakes down here. Um, you find a couple of those symbols scratched into the, the surface in places. As you move through, you come to a, a section where the sewers have actually, the, the kind of sides of the sewers have broken and fallen away. And there's this um, tunnel like open gaping hole leading down into the undercity, um, which you would have explored before. You can hear like that clanging and banging of uh, machinery, which is what you would have re- you would have been hearing, Derek, from up above. Mm-hmm. The um, 
the but the the Skaven trail seems to lead down here. You can see that there's um, kind of an, uh, a knotted, twisted rope um, hanging down and leading down to a lower platform down here um, that you can begin to make your way through um, mm. and down. It's easy enough to climb, so I won't make you make a test, Imran. <laughs> very, very decent of you. Yeah. Don't worry. I, Any I mean, time like, now, I feel the sorcerer's injuries wheeling up inside me. So, I mean, if I try and use the rope, I think I kind of need to because I'm 907 kilos. So I might just use the size of the walls and just climb <laughs> down that way. <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, yeah, so you, you make your way down the rope and you start to walk through these um, Aglaraxian ruins. Down here, there there is a little more natural light. The the ruins below the city are full of this ancient magical uh, mechanical equipment. Um, the Aglaraxians were not a particularly nice people. Um, the, the, it, it was a majocracy with others being enslaved. Um, the the um, citadels be beneath the city were built for the purpose of essentially fallout shelters should anything terrible happen, such as the Age of Chaos. Um, when in truth, many of them were used for various different uh, to hide their experiments from um, from uh, eyes that, that they didn't want seeing them. Um, you may have explored part of this before and found all kind of strange contraptions. The the actual realm gates below the city, the man made realm gate, you discovered to actually be powered by sacrificing um, hundreds of souls to the gate to actually power the gate. So that's the kind of unpleasant stuff that the Agloraxians <laughs> were into. Uh, but a lot of kind of esoteric strangeness down here. Um, large uh, cylindrical uh, pillars with, with energy running through them. Um, old clockwork bits of machinery and, and various different things like that. Metal grates kind of moving through then just like naturally formed tunnels. Um, many of which have been twisted and warped by Cinchian magic would you know, have unusual blinking eyes or ears just st literally sticking out of the walls, that kind of thing. So uh, quite quite an unpleasant and strange place to travel. Lovely. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Um, as you're making your way down here, you um, spot a strange sight up, a set, up ahead just as you see these, um, these glowing orbs floating through the air about the size of an eyeball. Um, and you can hear these whispered voices coming from them. And, and, and as they move through, they kind of turn and look at you and just do like a full ro rotation. And they just kind of continue drifting along, not really paying you any mind. Um, and you continue on on the rest of your way. Um, mm. This, uh, So I'll take another group test from folks. I should also ask, and this is always a bit of a giveaway, if you are moving silently or not. Uh, uh, yes, I will be moving stealthily. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> is there enough ambient light from the weird creations and magical energy down here to allow Zan to put the lantern away because otherwise mm. it doesn't really matter how silently we're moving if we're carrying a torch mm -hmm. um yeah uh there there would be uh, potentially kind of Zan you'd have areas where you'd, need, you'd be moving through darkness um but you would be able to see like lights up ahead and mm -hmm. yeah. and spot those uh the scaven symbols hidden throughout yeah. Zan will douse his light then and the advice of Imran. Okay. Um, back to my one dice. Come on. <laughs> another two successes. One success this time. Yay. Uh, that'll be another dice. three. And it nice. was triple wow. six. Wow. Wow. Wait, Excellent. Hang on, hang on. Let me see if I can show this to camera. This Just is what my dice did. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. The, um, yeah, you, you make your way through the tunnels and you get to the point where you can't find... Um, any more of those symbols etched into the walls or into grates or anything like that, mm -hmm. except at one point you notice a shadow on the wall um, and you look back and see that at different intervals, <clears throat> like ruins of like metal beams and things have been arranged so that when the light passes through them, it creates that symbol on the wall over here. Placed uh -huh. together, they don't actually make it, but the actual, the shadow forms the, the Skaven symbol, you know that you're on the right track. <coughs> um, as you move ahead, you path leads you through the the winding and twisting undercity, and it opens up. You can hear the sound of rushing water and kind of <laughs> squeaking and shouting in, in in queakish of the the Skaven language. Um, as you move around, st uh, Derek in particular, move stealthily up towards this uh, this new opening. You come across a huge 
open cavern, um, just filled with rushing water. Uh, water's tumbling down from somewhere nearby. You can't really make out the source and flooding this huge pool, which is then there's a waterfall falling off into the abyss, into just the darkness. Um, no idea where it is. Looking around, you see that the room is actually lined with these um, pistons or pumps of some sort, um, which looks like it might be used to pump water somewhere, but doesn't seem to actually be working at the moment. Over all of this, the um, has been built over this rickety wooden scaffolding um, and like chipped stone thrown down to make platforms and things like that. And along all these various platforms, you can see this um, strange alchemical equipment and devices and um, uh, large barrels with this seeping, like luminous green liquid through them. Um, and a large sluice that's just pumping this liquid down into the the basin below you, um, just filling it with this kind of toxic sludge, essentially. Um, and sure enough, as you look around, there are a lot of Skaven around here. You, you can see a number of Skaven, um, similar to the ones you saw, the kind of hooded figures um, hunched around uh, a makeshift fire, kind of squeaking to one another and, and chewing on something. Um, there's a platform off to your right where you can see, <coughs> excuse me, some more Skaven who are filling um, <coughs> sensors with strange liquid that is just um, spilling out of it. There's others who are loaded with these weird globular guns, with, uh, filling them with the, li uh, the liquid. But the thing that probably takes your sight the most would be um, there's a huge twisted monstrosity of a Skaven off to the platform on your left. Um, and this hooded figure adorned in uh, very Skaven iconography and with this bubbling, uh, bloated flesh uh, on them. Um, you see towards the south bank further away from you, um, you're coming uh, from the north side, They uh, there's two cages that you can see. <coughs> and you can just about make out that the cages are surrounded by these Skaven in hooded uh, robes that are covered in rot and decay. But within these cages, you do spot um, what looks to be human, um, kind of hunched on the ground. And then you would recognize the silhouette of a, a branch witch within one of the, the cages as well. Mm -hmm. From where we are, is there any way to reach the cages stealthily without having to go through the middle of Rat Central? No, so basically- Basically, what you have is the, the north bank where you would be coming through, which has a group of those, uh, the Skaven gutter runners on it. There's these rickety beams and things connecting to a central platform, which is filled with what look to be religious monks of some sort and, and another Skaven waving a sensor between them and they're inhaling this toxic fume um, to the, um, what would be your left? So the, <laughs> the east is the <laughs> what appears to be you would imagine the the big brain skaven and the large um, rat ogre uh, with uh, with two skaven whips keeping it in check. Um, to the west, there is that platform where they're filling their sensors and their uh, strange cannons, and then to the very south bank um, are the cages. So you'd have to pretty much make your way through everything to get there, unless you wanted to try and swim through the toxic sludge. But you know mm -hmm. that's on you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I already had a bath this month. <laughs> Uh, okay. It seems we have found the nest of evil down here. We should expunge as soon as possible. With the fires of Sigma, I should add. <laughs> they befall the waters that feed the garden of my lady. They all die. I see no need for subtlety. <laughs> <laughs> I do I think mean, some sort of plan may be warranted. Hmm. Well, Better runners, gunners, than the rat ogre with the big brain would be my suggestion. How far away is big brain? Uh, I just sent you guys a link to a, a map there, which might just help you guys visualize it a bit okay. more. Um, which should help. Um, so you have your various different platforms as well. So if you look at the map, and obviously I think we'll try and share this. The, uh, the, the yellow is the, the big brain guy, you would imagine, um, with, the, with the rat ogre around it. But uh, So you could probably, so potentially, if you're, you're on the south bank and you have this wall, you could hug. 
if you could take out the two gutter runners nearby stealthily, you would actually be able to make your way over relatively safely, potentially stealthily, if you can go unnoticed over towards the big brain. But it would, you'd imagine it'd be quite difficult to actually get there um, with so many Skaven flooding in the chamber. There's um, about two dozen of the, the monks, and then there's the various with the sensors and, and the, the cannons and the gutter runners and the, the larger ogre as well. Derek, can you hit him? Point to the big brain from where you are. You mean shoot him? Yes. Yeah, if you like. Uh, I'm sh- pretty sure I'm in range. I I would like. Yes, that that would be terrific. So... I feel as an opening gambit, removing the person that the gutter runner referred to as the big brain <laughs> may be a good way to start. Uh, sure. And I tell you what, this might be a time to use one of our soul fires to make this a flawless success. Flawless victory. You would notice there does seem to be some kind of like panic going on. Obviously, they have been warned that, you know, they they were kind of spotted. Whether they know they're being followed or not is another thing. They would think they've gotten away, but they have. uh, It's created a bit of a commotion and a kerfuffle. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, I will... uh, attempt to shoot the big brain from stealth and I will use a soul fire to make it a perfect success. Excellent. Okay. Let's do it. Um, let me check his health. <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> that could oh. be the problem. Oh, he's dead. Okay. Um, <laughs> really? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, uh, okay. No. So let me see. Right. So I will, yeah, I'll give you guys a surprise round here. So you'll each get an action. Mm-hmm. Um, so Derek is taking a shot yes. at Uzik. Um, right. Five damage. So auto hit with five. All right. I'm totally okay with you using that soul fire to do this. So yeah. <laughs> I may do it again because we have a grand total of three. If you guys want to keep the, the rats off me while I just pin the leader down three times. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so you... Um, fire off your arrow and it kind of pierces the the clamor like like all the skaven just stop and like watch the arrow almost <laughs> um, and uh, he's like the, the 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 big brain is kind of looking at something he kind of like stops and looks up and just kind of that like oh <laughs> um, and just like hits him in the the chest he kind of twists slightly and gets him in the shoulders like slams him into one of the barrels uh and he just like starts like, squeaking while he's <laughs> and pulling it out um but yes so you would that be six damage? Uh, well, it's a four dice, four d six attack, and then my damage is one plus successes. Yeah, so it's five. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that slams into him and does five damage. He kind of like panics and flails, but he he's hurt. <laughs> but he's, he's, he's not dead, thankfully. Um, he's gonna feel that in the morning. Yeah. So Imran and Zan, you can take a take a go, and then we'll run through this chaos. Cool. So literally. There's a couple of uh, scaven in front of me, are there then? Just sort of around the corner? In Yeah, yeah. 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 So the two gutter runners kind of like hunched around a thing. They're kind of now like looking at Uzik, so not even looking at you. So right. Uh, Uzik, I'm gonna, Uzik is the name Skaven, so he's the big brain. I'm going to rock around the corner and bellowing Sigmar's name because stealth be damned. <laughs> Sigmar does not hide in the shadow. I'm going to slam my hammer into the back of this thing's head. So Excellent. I will charge in and smack it. Good. Oh, uh, and I'm good. Oh, sorry, not good. I'm average. Oh, um, uh, these are average as well. Yeah, so it's four pluses. Yeah. So, uh, so that's three hits on this thing for uh, for four damage in total. Four damage. Okay. So I need to this. I'm just gonna put the HP on here because it's easier for me to track. That's all right. Um, uh, yeah, you basically run up and just smash this thing in the head. It kind of like face first into the fire almost, and its head pops up and it's just flames because you smashed it into the, <laughs> the the smoldering fire and just kind of like starts squeaking, like floundering for its weapons, and uh, it, it almost goes to run. Can um, I can I use my metal to do another attack? On the... um, not in a surprise round, but what okay. you could have done is use metal to double your dice. If you ah, okay. So if nah, you it's use... fine. I've crushed this thing's face into it. No, if, uh, if you just roll two more uh, d6, sure, yeah. we'll know. Don't have to get any more. I got one more success on there. So. Excellent. So it is, uh, let's say you smashed its face into the fire. Uh, it kind of like screams and just, and just leaps into the water to try and put up its face, and it's gone. Um, 
<laughs> uh, the, they so, all knew the risks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, um, toasted rat is a delicacy. Yeah. Uh, Imran, it's your turn. You would notice, I think you have pretty decent natural awareness. You would yeah. notice the, um, the, the, where they're kind of refilling those globes and the sensors is about 10 foot in the air, um, mm -hmm. as is the other one with the, the big brain. It's, they're kind of on these stilts. Um, the one in particular where they're refilling, it's Skaven architecture. So it's like ruins Rupi. built on ruins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it looks like, you know, if you want it, it, it is an option to. Uh, I could attempt to arc and bolt one of the uh, the spindly looking supports out and have the whole thing come crashing down. Is that what yes. you're saying? Yes. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> what are the chances I will make that roll? Let's find out how big the endless spell is from this one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could use one of the soul fires. Oh, how no, did, how did you summon a purple sun? I don't <laughs> understand. <laughs> Our survey says, oh, get me. One, two, three, and four successes. Oh, well done. Oh, nice. oh, no. um, yeah, it you... is only an Archean bolt, so essentially a jet of water, like a pressure hose. <laughs> It just comes jetting out from the end of I mean, the staff. That's still going to hurt. Smashing <laughs> into the support. Yeah. So it's, it's um, four damage. You blast it off, and uh, you can see that the support is kind of banded with this rotten rope and kind of like hammered through with these rusty nails. You blast it with water, and it kind of just like splinters, and the thing kind of just slowly goes, and it's right on the side where the, the large barrel of this toxin is, which just weighs it down, and just kind of like it slumps. Um, two or three of this game kind of like slide and start to fall into the water. One kind of grabs onto the other end, um, but the the stuff is washed away, and uh, two of the Skaven are also washed away into the water and swept towards the waterfall. Let's see how they do on their turn, um, if they are strong <laughs> enough to not get washed off the edge. Um, but yeah, two two of them are pretty much washed away, <coughs> and uh, may possibly die <laughs> on the, on the, on the, on the i give them a 5.6 for entering the water yeah. <laughs> cool okay so that is your surprise round so we're back around to initiative and imran actually has the top initiative so imran can mm -hmm. go again. nobody's more surprised than i um <laughs> so, so yeah sorry metal I, I didn't ex explain so metal can be used to take extra actions on your turn mm -hmm. um metal can be used to double your dice your training uh double your training in a test uh, which would be very good for your channeling for Imran, um, or it can be used to double your focus after a test. Um, that's what you can use metal for. Currently, we have Ratogar, Zeke, a couple of handlers and friends off to our east, and then yes. to the west is the collapsing um, platform with the mm -hmm. robed individuals, playbox, <clears throat> yeah. which could be anything at all. Um, uh, and the, the any, central the, central location has uh, another kind of stone platform filled with uh, with plague monks and a sensor bearer who is walking amongst them. Uh, although how, I guess now how close are they to me right now? Uh, as, medium as range. far as everything looking around me quickly, which is the biggest threat to me and my safety? Which is the most important thing to me? Mm, yeah, um, is a you know terrible thing to waste. There's a gutter runner in front of you. You're not sure how brave Skaven are to, <laughs> to run towards a uh, angry Priest of Sigmar and angry uh, Sylvaneth. Mm -hmm. um, the ones on the um, the collapsing platform, you would imagine, probably aren't going to be a threat, at least maybe for a round until they right themselves. Um, the ones in the on the middle platform, the Plague Monks and Sensor Bear, could be an issue. The Rat Ogre, if it gets to you, would definitely be a big issue. Uh, in that case, I will... Considering that my Sigmite friend is practically beside me swinging that ludicrous hammer, of course, I'll yeah. not worry about the gutter runner up close. But what I will do is turn my attention to the two whip wielding, chittering rat men behind the rat ogre and attempt to Archean <laughs> bolt them. Excellent. Or sorry, Archean blast, because uh, it, it will hit both. Mm, oh, DN6. Oh, we like that. <laughs> I, will, I will use my metal. Yeah, so you've got eight, eight of, dice. Eight of oh, the finest oh, dice. Nice. Which is particularly good if I can actually succeed. Can we actually succeed? Oh, oh. Called the phone. One, <laughs> two, three. And I have focus. You do? I have focus. I do have focus in my channeling so I can turn that one into a fourth. So, wow. four okay. successes. Each creature wow. in the zone gets one damage per success. 
Yeah. So eat it, little chittering rat fellas. <laughs> yeah. They have armor, it doesn't matter, but you basically like, I suppose, summon up the ether sea from this uh, this pool below you and it becomes mm. this beautiful, uh, uh, more All blue. All the crystal clear water is just drawn up out of the filth and murk yeah. to slam into the people. Yeah, you just hear this crunch of bone and as the water <laughs> washes away, the two with the whips are just like crumpled and almost driven through the wood. <laughs> and they're both just shattered and twisted and not moving. The rat ogre is kind of like winces and looks around and sees no one with a whip and kind of like just lets out this roar. Um, Uzik pulling the arrow out of his chest, like kind of like <laughs> strikes himself, like, huh, and then just gets slammed down with the, the water <laughs> into the ground as well. Um, so, yeah, that's was a, okay. So he is not doing super great. Uh, <laughs> they're dead <laughs> um, yeah that's, I'm not sure what way they're at over it let's check um, but yeah you've done some serious cleaning house mm. <laughs> on, on those. let the seas wash away their filth yeah it's net cleaning good. service <laughs> <laughs> cool okay um, and then we are on to Zeke Derek I uh, know uh, Zeke Zeke the, the in rats. first Rat's gonna get to go. He's smart. Not a happy buddy. Right. Um, he kind of pulls himself up and looks around and sees you kind of with your hand outstretched and just lets out <laughs> this horrible squeak and just shouts, Disease, disease at you. Um, can you give me a DN41 body fortitude test? <laughs> oh, can I? Yes. Will I? Probably not. <laughs> Let me just that. get my body of one and my fortitude of... Well, that'll be zero. Okay. And, uh, well, it's, versus, it's versus 8d6, so I'm not going to worry is about it. Is it? Right. So one won't help me there. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Uh, so what did you get? Well, I got none. What did you get? Okay. Please be I gentle. Got... It's my first time out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so basically, this is uh, he's casting a, uh, a Miracle of the Horned Rat. Um oh, no. So it's opposed uh, his soul devotion versus your body fortitude. So <coughs> he succeeds with five successes. Ooh. Um, so you take uh, five damage, which ignores armor as you feel this like rot kind of start to grow within you. Um, and you are poisoned for one day. Uh, um, so poisoned means you roll one less dice on all your tests. Oh. Okay. So, so five wounds. Uh, five toughness damage. Oh, five toughness damage. Yeah. Thank God for that. How much toughness have you got left? Two. I, I will heal. <laughs> heal my turn. I? So keep you up. So, I feel. Uh, up. We shall see. Yes. So. Um, Didn't I have the fish last night? It's like. <laughs> so I do um, that night is my answer. And what he's actually going to do is because. He is a chosen type enemy, so he has metal just like you. Um, so he is also going to do the same to Zan. Yes, you uh, try and disease all of you. Uh, what was it? A body, a body fortitude. Body fortitude. Okay. I feel like I'm picking on uh, on Jerry now because I've rolled really badly. <laughs> um, it's all right. Uh, I'm used to it. So I got one success. Okay, he gets four successes this time, um, which means you take three damage, which ignores armor, okay. and you are poisoned for a day. And then lastly, he's going to go for the dark. Uh -huh. So it's my body and fortitude. Fortitude has nothing. Uh, I will... Uh, my metal won't help because I don't have either. Uh, that'll be... What's the DN? Uh, four. That'll be three successes. Three successes. He um so oh three successes. Okay, he gets four successes. So you take one damage, which ignores armor. Okay. Um, and you are poisoned uh for a day. Um, and then what he's gonna do is feeling like this is probably a little bit too close for comfort. He runs past the rat ogre, kind of ducking under it before it's noticed him, um, and runs across the the rickety beams, kind of like lightly bouncing across the the rotten wood, and heads over towards the cages okay. um, to try and get further away from you guys. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the gutter runner, um, the, the remaining gutter runner uh, in front of you, Zan, kind of sees you and just turns and runs, and it's uh, <laughs> it's basically going to try and hide, essentially. 
So who has the, <laughs> yeah, how does this gonna work? Natural awareness, I think you probably have three. I've got three. Uh, two for me. Two, okay. I don't think we can even see. That would be a DM4. All right, so he, so Derek, you're able to keep an eye on him. Um, Zan and Imran, you lose track of him as he, okay. he runs over and kind of like ducks between uh, into some of the, the shadows hidden and into the nooks and crannies. Dak, Derek, you can actually keep track of him, but the other two um, aren't aware of where he is. Okay. He's great. Um, <laughs> cool. Okay, so now we're on to Derek's turn, and then it'll be Zan. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Derek is basically going to move up on the north side and try and get into a position to pull off one of his talents. Excellent. So he is going to go for the Heel of Doom into the Plague Monks on the, the central platform. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. So, so I will read this out for everybody at home. That's great. <clears throat> You rain down a heel of projectiles on the enemies around you. Choose a zone within your weapons range and make a DN41 body ballistic test. Each enemy in that zone must make an opposed DN41 body reflex test. On a failure, the target suffers damage equal to the difference in successes. Uh, if the target passes, they take no damage. All right. So uh, these guys are a swarm, so they do act as one, um, but you will deal double damage to them for an area attack because they're a swarm. <laughs> okay, so it's going to be my body of three plus my ballistic of one, and I'm going to use my metal to make my training a two in that to give me five dice. Awesome. Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, so I get three successes. Three successes, which is... Uh, with my focus, I can make a fourth. <laughs> nice. <laughs> awesome. Um, you fire off. Uh, so, so four damage. It's a swarm. So you, you fire all these arrows into the air, or fire an arrow, and it splits, and all these arrows come hailing down on them. The, uh, the Skaven kind of look up and panic and start to like take cover beneath each other as much as they can, but they just start to drop and just like... Thump, 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 thump. Um, when the dust has cleared, um, <laughs> you see the sensor bear. Okay, I can make a test for this guy as well. Um, oh, dear. Um, no, he's, oh, he's he's just about alive. Um, the, when, Darek, when the dust no, is like cleared, Skaven. Skaven, die. <laughs> The Skaven have been reduced from um, 11 Skaven in the zone to 3. So uh, you wow. <laughs> basically just obliterate. There's just Skaven bodies everywhere. <coughs> Some of them try to leap to platforms. They just get caught midair by the arrow, hit the beams, and just fall into the water. But uh, yeah, you just like wipe out. Yeah. I'm assuming I can't do that all the time. Yeah, you can. Oh, goody. Yeah. Yeah, as long as you've got metal to use the ability, and you get one yeah. back at the start of every turn. So. Yeah. So. Ah, well, I started with one metal. <laughs> Yeah, you get uh, one back at the start of every turn. You, you're great. Yeah. Oh, so you can go over the total of one? Uh, no, no. So you started with one. So that turn you use, you took an action and spent a metal to yeah, double your yeah. dice. So next turn you'll have your metal back. So you can do the exact yeah, same yeah. thing again. Yeah, but I wouldn't have had the metal to increase my... Oh, no, I had my... You would, yeah. Yeah, yeah you would. Uh, but I wouldn't have had it to increase the pull to five. Oh, you double dipped. Oh, you, oh, you double dipped. To use it. Yeah, yeah. Accidentally double dipped, yes. Because I, I didn't realize I had to use a metal to use the talent. Oh no, sorry. That um, you don't. The the, the talent is uh, used as an action. Oh, there you go. okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Then yeah. it's so perfect. you're all good. Yeah. <laughs> then oh, all the no. murder is fine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh no, I mean, like there there is another platform there, full of yummy, yummy <laughs> murdery things. Yeah. Uh, God. Um, excellent. Okay, so Zan, it is your turn now. Uh, so Zan is going to start off by um, using his miracle healing spirit. Um, so I'm going to now. Do, can I decide to ch spend the metal afterwards, or do I do it in the to, to um, boost the effect of it? Or uh, I'll let you decide afterwards if you want. Cool, yeah, cool. So I'm going to use my healing spirit to. Uh, so the power of the god wash of your god Sigma, always Sigma, uh, washes over you and your allies and heals your injuries. Make a DN five soul devotion test. You and your allies in the zone. Rick for one toughness per success, uh, and I can see how this goes. Oh. oh my days. Uh, so that is four successes. 
uh, with that, which is pretty insane. Uh, nice. And I will use a metal, my, me my metal for the one, I've got two, but I'll use one of my metals for the turn to add my soul to that, meaning that eight wound, eight toughness are healed. Wow. From, uh, from wow. all of us. So um, all of you get that back if, yeah. uh, if you've taken any toughness damage. Once more. Yeah, just back up the full, you know, there was minor scratches on the bark. Mm. And I think uh, you're you have two metals uh, because you're do, a yes. war priest, so you yeah. can you can go again. Yeah. So then I'm going to move because from what I from my vantage point, I see a nice bridge, nice bridge yeah. that I can cross. So that's where I'm going to go. So as uh, so Zan's going to run over to that side of the zone, uh, and as he is going to run past Darok, he's going to say, "Did anyone see where that gutter runner went?" <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, obviously he doesn't know where it is, but he's going to yeah. move over to that side of the zone. Uh, yeah, so um, you can basically run across. So you can move, uh, you get a move anyway, which allows you mm -hmm. to move to an adjacent zone. Yeah. Um, and then you will still have an action if you want to spend your metal again, or you can keep it to the next turn if you want to You want to hold on to it. So, our, um, so you have the central platform where mm -hmm. uh, Dark has hailed down death. You have the platform kind of to your left, which has <coughs> is... Um, Rat ogre to the, infested to the east, which has a rat ogre, or the one to the west, which uh, has collapsed thanks to Imran. So, <laughs> which one? Which one are you going to? I'm going to go into the uh, the middle zone. Excellent. So yeah, uh, because he doesn't know where that gut runners went, so he's going to run into that yeah, zone. They see me. Definitely run straight past them. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I can move up, and because I've got the metal, can I do another attack? You can indeed. Yeah. So I see that nasty looking plague sensor bearer, and I'm going to decide that he needs to meet the justice of Sigma. Um, so I, I guess, does this, does this count as a charge as well, or is it just a, um, I've just moved in and just hit it? Oh, actually, yes, you could charge to the next yeah, zone. Cool. Um, I will say, as you enter the zone, the the, the cloying fog from the sensor mm -hmm. um, floods your sense, and you kind of like, you shake it off a bit, you feel, it like tightening your lungs and kind of cramping your stomach a bit. Okay. <coughs> you take one damage, which ignores armor. Cool. Um, what about if the other sensor bearer was still alive? So I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna use that metal, second metal, to do the uh, the warhammer attack against it. Uh, now, is this a servant of chaos as well? I guess it is it indeed is. a servant of chaos. Yes. And that increases. And I forgot about this before. It increases my combat ability, my melee, up to good. Excellent, nice. nice. So its defense is poor, so you only need twos. Perfect. <laughs> uh, that is three successes, and I have a training and weapon skill, so I'm going to bump my one up to a two, so that's four successes. There Excellent. You so you invigorate your allies, race across the platform to the mm -hmm. uh, to the middle platform, cry, uh, cry for Sigmar and cave its skull in. Uh, <laughs> it kind of like has the sensor swinging back and forth, like it's reeling back as if it's going to hit you with it, and yeah. you just swing your hammer before and just catch it in the head, and it just slumps to the ground with a clatter, and the sensor falls into the into the, the yeah. goop below you. And then Zan's just going to glare. Paddington Bear style at the two, <laughs> the two scaven in front of him. <laughs> they, kind of like, they, they look at you and look at the, the all of the corpses around them um, <laughs> and have a think about what to do next. Yeah. Um, excellent. Okay. So, okay, that's gone. Oh, no, there's one left. <laughs> um, so this, the, the other sensor bearer that was on the, the, the platform is going to try and ready itself and move to the central one to just try and get out of there. Mm -hmm. um, the... Um, I can't remember what this is actually. Um, it's gonna also just use its move to get to that zone, which is ah, Skyr Acolyte. Okay, um, which um, you see it kind of reach in and takes out this orb and just hurls it at you. Um, which is a ranged attack. So, what's your defense? My defense is average. And its attack is poor. <laughs> There's nothing to laugh at poor. Poor is fine yeah. for an attack. <laughs> yeah. It gets this like glow, this orb, which looks like it's a, a smaller version of what's in those barrels. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of like looks at you and like, ha ha, and throws it at you and just like arcs over your head and just goes flying into, in that, just, <laughs> into the water behind you. Uh, I just kind of like looks like a panic <laughs> like, expression deciding where to go. Um, but yes, that's uh, their turn. Um, the rat ogre seeing you kind of like lets out this roar and kind of looks around and it just like leaps from the platform it's on onto the one here and just uh. runs straight at you. 
Um, so it's going to be taking a charge action. This is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to worry about here. Are we sure? So what's your defense is? Uh, average. average. Average, okay. Sorry. Its attack is good, so it needs threes. Oh, dear. Um, it's either good or bad when a GM says that. <laughs> okay, you can never know for sure. Three, four, five, Can't six. Both. Uh, yeah, it, it basically runs at you and you can see it like snarling and it has this like long rusted bladed fist and it just runs up and like gut punches you with it. Um, you take eight damage as it slams into oh. you. So that is uh, one over my toughness. So is that just a minor wound, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So if you overrun, you've one left over, um, and then it's a minor. Did you take? Did you use your armor? Oh no, sorry. My uh, my armor dif- uh, minus it by one. So th- I, that's taken me to zero toughness. As yeah. Well, so. so you don't take a wound. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Cool, yeah. Um, but then it attacks you again. Um, so it's. Uh, yeah, it is going to attack again. Freeze. Okay, that's worse. That's yeah, okay. That's um, good. <laughs> uh, it again, like gut punches you again and just kind of snarls and screams in your face, almost lifting you up on its uh, bladed fist. Uh, you take five damage from that. Okay. Minus armor. Uh, so that's four damage in total. Yeah. So um, after you lose your toughness, you start to take wounds. Um, yeah. One damage over that deals minor wound, which fills one space. Mm-hmm. Two to four damage deals a severe wound, which fills two spaces, and five plus fill uh, three spaces. So okay. two, so two spaces, spaces on your wound track spaces. full. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the poor plague monks. They, they exist. Uh, there's not even enough for them to be a swarm. Um, <laughs> uh, the plague one kind of like uh, the remaining ones look at you and one kind of pulls out this rusty blade that has god knows what on it and runs up and tries to basically shank you um, yeah. and sorry your defense is average isn't it? <laughs> yes yes. I fear I may have overestimated my power <laughs> it, uh, it stabs into you and actually succeeds on all of them oh. and does four damage Oh, God, um, man, that's filled all my wound slots then. Yeah, yes. minus one for your armor. So, yeah. Oh, minus one for my armor. Yes, so it still so, fills your wound slots. It still fills my wound um, slots. Is it a soul fiery time for poor Zan to cheat it death? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Good, good news is it would poison you, but you're already poisoned. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's a win. Um, the other one is, is. going to unfortunately come running at you as well. Okay, um, so I, I, I'll have needed to cheat death. Oh no, it's because I've that's filled all my wounds, but not I'm not mortally wounded yet. Is that right? Yes, exactly. Okay, right, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> it it runs at you, um, and also like seeing you go down, it like piles in with its with its body. Um, so it like attacks for Skaven, yeah. Yeah, it attacks you with two, which will do one damage to you. Okay. Um, so that so would now, take me out. You are but, mortally wounded now. Yes. But I'm going to use the soul fire to cheat death. Mm-hmm. So can't I, use it until your turn. Oh, I can't use it in my turn. Oh, okay, yeah, that's okay, fine. Right, okay, I, okay. I will force feed you it if you're lying on the platform. <laughs> that's true. Actually, yeah, other people can make you do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm right. so happy we didn't use those super aggressively. <laughs> <laughs> I could have been bad. I've, I've burned all the sapphire. Zan dies. <laughs> <laughs> but my life dies. Yeah. It's all right. Drink your money. I can't hear you from all the death I'm raining up here. <laughs> Speak up, Zan. Oh, you're not moving much. All right. <laughs> More so far into the air for fun. Re excellent. Okay, this is um, fine. This and is we fine. are back around to Imran. Okay. Um, so, having seen Zan be ratted to yeah. death, go down under a pile of rats. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I will. Uh, I will go forward onto the platform with, um, and then. How's how's mm, mm, isn't it? Huh? Mm. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Possibly there's a rat ogre and two skaven stabbing him up at the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, tricky. I should say it, it depends on how much money Zan has. He could also drink a sphere, which is a hundred drops, to recover from being mortally wounded as well. Ah. I have 160 drops. So I may end up <laughs> drinking away my money. So, so. Well, first things first, we need to get the things off him. Mm. Because, I mean, you know, 
I think the the only thing to do would be to use the incredibly successful cloying sea mists once more. <laughs> <laughs> Might I this advise? Be fine. Might I advise a soul fire on this, Jerry? Oh yeah, yeah. You can advise away. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Definitely do that. So much for that, then. Um, You'll be fine. It'll be. It'll be fine. Imran's got this. Yeah. And the dice gods channeling as well. So low they did yeah. metal. Yeah, yeah I'm going to use. Oh, I'm going to use metal this time. <laughs> it, it hold dice. I mean, bound to be doable. Yeah. Two, one, <laughs> two, three, four. That's one over what I needed. Yay! Uh, uh, how often does focus regenerate? I know metals every turn, but is focus. Focus you can use on every roll. It's on every roll. Oh, every smashing. Roll, yeah. So that, so I can pump that to five then. Oh. So the good news is it's successfully cast. So no purple sun today. Yes. <laughs> um, enemies in the zone have to make a DN4S test on their body fortitude or become incapacitated for success. Uh, wow. Three rounds. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's very easy to kill people who are incapacitated. Um, okay, so the plague sensor bearer fails. <laughs> the plague monk fails. The plague monk fails. Um, so what's the, what's the difficulty there? Four or three, is it? Uh, four, well, if it's, if it's based on my successes. Yeah, how many successes uh, my successes did you get? are five. Five. Yeah, but I need three to set it off. So oh yeah, so, so three. So sense. how many extra successes did you get? Two. Uh, two. So it's okay. Well, it's a four three. That's still pretty pretty hard. Okay. Ooh, let's see, Mister Rat Ogre. Oh dear. Hang on. Oh three. Three, just just about. I feel like I should <laughs> take a picture of this in case people think I'm taking the piss. <laughs> <laughs> now we trust you. Oh, uh, yes. Sam so, doesn't trust you. <laughs> the rat holder is not incapacitated, but everyone else is. Um, yes. Ooh. That's that's all right. That that clears a few of them off. Great. Um, Am I going to have to wade into the rat ogre? That's why we brought you. <laughs> okay. Uh, did you did you move up as well? Was it? Uh, oh yeah, I know. I'm 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 leaning over your body. Bestriding you like the Colossus of Rhodes, protecting my <laughs> downed comrade. Staff spinning, end of it lit up like St. Elmo's fire, just a violent <laughs> white lightning arcing off the end of it. So I try and yeah. keep the rat guys back from you. Mm -hmm. So um, it's Uzik's turn now. So he's going to gonna die. basically <laughs> running past, pushing through the other, uh, the other plague monks, um, trying to get past them. As he does, he just basically points at um, Derek on the far side, seeing it was the biggest, scariest threat. Also, out of, uh, you wouldn't know, but he effing hates Skaven. Or, sorry, he hates, he's not a Skaven, he hates uh, Sylvanus. Um, it's all right, I also did, like, shoot him. Yeah. <laughs> Valid reason to hit me. Oh, that's terrible, oh my god. <laughs> Whoa, here we go, this is the other way. 86, I needed four and up, and I got zero. Oh, <laughs> Oh, the dice gods shine down upon me. It, it wouldn't be Skaven if they didn't screw miss. things up. So yeah. this, uh, this happened to me running a Skaven spellcaster before. The um, the Grey Seer has a thing where they can chew warp stone, um, but if they fail the test while doing it, they explode. Um, it gives them extra extra dice to do. I think I had twelve d six or something with it, <laughs> and I failed the test on the first turn, and he exploded. And that was <laughs> supposed to be a boss encounter. I was like, oh okay, <laughs> that's the end of him. Oh, but. Uh, but yes, Uzik um, fires off that spell, but uh, Darek, imbued with Alariel's spirit, shrugs it off harmlessly. Um, and then he is going to try and hide as well. So, let's see. He slips away as far as all of you can tell. Not sure where he is. I won't put him in the bin there. But, uh, but yes, so that is the end of Uzik's turn. Darek, it is your turn. Um, well, seeing how things are going from bad to worse for the, the Sigmarite pr priest, uh, Darag is going to rock across the bridge, ignoring the gutter runner behind him because it's only a gutter runner. And basically, go you make eye it's like sneaking out with a knife and you make eye contact with it and just like, no, 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 we've done this dance. I have to deal with the big one. I'll come back for you later. <laughs> so basically, I'm going to rock up to the rat ogre, switch out to my great sword, and go for a. A hefty swing at it. Excellent. 
So 46. Uh, I'm on good. What's its defense? He's on good as well. So fours? Uh, yes, four up. Come on. That will be three successes. Excellent. Plus two for your greatsword? Uh, yes, plus two for the greatsword. Nice. So that's and five. Slashing damage. Mm. You swing and slash into him, and there is some resistance from its like thick height, um, but you do manage to take a, take a lump out of it. Mm -hmm. um, but it is still standing. Okay. Ah, I'm dumb. I should have metaled for an extra dice. You can metal for an extra attack. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can metal for an extra attack. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Second like oh, verse. Wait, was first. Was first. That's what you were yeah. doing. Yeah. Nope. Oh, no. There you go. Well, get in there's there. something new. Right up there. So for this one, that's another three. Oh, nice. Okay. So that's five. That's so five total. Yeah, you just start taking chunks out. Like flesh starts to fly off it. <laughs> um, it looks unfazed or uh, angry, maybe. Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, but but uh, yeah, you're definitely taking chunks out of it. Uh, but it's just this big monstrous creation, um, and just seems annoyed by by everything that's happening to it. <laughs> You know, Derek rocks up and goes, rats on the menu. <laughs> and you can actually look this one in the eye because you're about to yeah, say yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, actually, I should make yourself bigger. Um, uh, the, so, Zan, it is your turn now. You are pretty much on your knees. Um, you're mortally wounded, which means you're stunned, so you can still take actions. Okay. Um, so you can drink a sphere of Aquagranus, if you wish, um, uh, as a free action. Okay, so oh. that makes even that makes that's I've got, I've got one metal. Well, you get one metal back a turn, don't you? So yep. I'll have one metal to do you stuff with. So yes, I will quaff a sphere, smash it into your face. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they do like the the edible liquid orbs that you get. Oh yeah, yeah, like one of those. Wait. Like no. Like, like a, a bo yeah. like a boba or something from a tea. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah how much baby yoga with a bunch of eggs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, how much does that restore, or does that just? Um, how much does that restore really toughness? Quick. I had the page open, ready to check, and then realized hey, it was the wrong page. Uh, I think it's half your toughness. Half my toughness. Okay. Sure. Well, I'll do that. I'll do that for now, and if there's any difference, then I'll. Uh, so. Stand back to my knees, valiant and fairly battered. Um, is it worth me uh, using Light of Sigma on these guys? Um, so a um, sphere of Aquagoranus restores all your toughness, oh, okay. um, removes all conditions, so the poison condition is also gone. Oh, yeah. Um, and it clears one space on your wound track. Oh, perfecto. Uh, in which case, then... I will look even more triumphant and use <laughs> and use light of Sigma. Popeye uh, style. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm gonna use light of Sigma. So you draw upon the holy searing light of Sigma to burn your foes. Make a DN five one soul devotion test. That's five dice. Um, and enemies in your zone suffer one damage per success when you use smell you choose to spend metal to have the attack ignore armor. I think I might nice. do that. Um, which will be the... Oh, no, I'm using the metal to cast the... Oh, no, I'm not using the metal to cast the... No, you're using the action to cast the... Yeah, yeah. So, yes, I will cast the miracle and see what happens. So it's 5-1. Uh, so that's 2. And do I have a focus in devotion? I do. So I'm going to use my focus to make that 3. So I'll use... So that's 3 damage, and I'll make it ignore armor with the metal that I have for this turn. So, yeah. Excellent. On everything, um, any every enemy in the zone takes three damage. You oh, you raise the rat dudes. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> you uh you raise your hammer and call out to to Sigmar. The the rats almost start to burn from the inside out, and you see like lightning start to crackle across their flesh and start to burn it away. And they just let out these twisted squeaking screams. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they they all die. <laughs> Excellent. How's the rat ogre looking after that little bit? Oh of yes, actually. It? Oh, it ignores armor as well, doesn't it? So yeah, it's that's three, three damage. damage. Yeah, <laughs> three damage to the rat ogre. Um, he's looking hurt. He's looking hurt, but still standing, just about. Um, so can, the Paddington hard stare is now slightly wavering, but, <laughs> but it's still there. So. Um, and he'll give a nod to uh, Imran for uh, her help, her help, and to Darek as well. Yeah. The uh, the rat ogre lets out a roar, having basically like impaled you, and then had chunks taken out of it by the sylvanith, and turns around and quarrels with the fist and tries to to stab at it, um, because it, it is in a rabid fury because someone in the zone has suffered a wound, which means its melee increases one step. Its <laughs> melee is now superb 
Oh dear. Um, so what's your defense, Dark? Is it good? Uh, it's average. Average. So it needs twos. Me or my? This thing is quite literally a beast. It's, uh... The important thing is, Derek, if needs be, you can make a heroic last stand, which will give us a soul fire back after you die. Yeah, yeah, do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it whirls and like stabs, almost like as if it knows what to go for and it aims for your lamentary, uh, which oh. is like the, the little um, seed at the center of the, the Sylvanith yeah. that stores their memories. Uh, and it stabs into you for eight damage. Okay, Ugh. so my, my armor is two. Is so, boring armor? Uh, no, so you would take six damage from it then. Okay. So six so, toughness. So I'm on two toughness. Excellent. Jeez, so it um, it will try to get you again because it also has metal. And they all hit, so it would oh. stab at you for nine damage. Uh, it becomes seven, so... Um, so I one, think you should... Two, three. Four. Yeah, and I am mortally wounded. You shouldn't. No, you won't be mortally wounded. It depends on the, the level of damage. So you had two toughness, did you? Yeah, uh, I had two toughness left. It did nine, which means it went seven. through for seven. So you'd be down to. Um, so then you'd be um, your toughness would be all gone, and then the extra five damage carries over into wounds. Mm -hmm. So the yep. wounds don't aren't aren't one for one. Oh, um, okay. So five damage would fill three wounds slots. Okay. So you're still so you're not you're not down yet. Yeah. But you are uh, uh, you are wounded. Not a happy chappy. No, uh, and that is the end of its turn. And the uh, plague monks are going to race into the zone, uh, <laughs> squeaking and shouting and just. Um, the they run towards you and they are a swarm, so they basically all try to batter the pre the priest of Sigma. Um, this is fine, he says. Um, <laughs> Their swarm, Sacrifice so they... yourself so that I may live. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they are pretty bad, though. What's your defense? Uh, defense is average. Six, seven, eight. Uh, I feel another light of Sigma coming on. <laughs> they need fours. They're a swarm. So Sigma welling up in you again, Zan. Yeah. That's a lot of ones. <laughs> Five ones on that. Oh. Um, yeah, they they race and just start like basically all of them just start stabbing and uh, uh, driving into you and trying to, trying to take you down. And um, you take seven damage from that minus any armor. So seven minus one, so that's six toughness. And I've got all my toughness back before, so yeah, I've got two left. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, they basically all race across that rickety platform into the. Um, into the zone with you guys. Um, mm -hmm. And it is back around to Imran's turn. <laughs> Dang, <Night. babe. laughs> I want one of the soul fires. Uh huh. We, we will let you have this. Yeah. We still and have then to. I'm going to attempt to Reptide the oh. Rat Ogre, Ooh. which oh, nice. will do six damage, which ignores armor. Uh -huh. Ooh, okay. okay. I'm uh, good with this. Uh, and I'm hoping that that's. Will at least put it on the back foot. <laughs> I, really I, I am absolutely can, fine with can this. You, point. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. After doing, because now you can move and then perform an action. Can you perform an action and move? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Move, uh, movement is straight free. Yeah. Just, just a bit. <laughs> Touch the retreat. Then coming rat swarms. <laughs> yeah. I'm a caster, not a fighter. <laughs> with your high toughnesses and armors and stuff it's outrageous <laughs> so yeah so six six unsavable wounds as I attempt wow. to uh, rip the water from the very blood of the beast wow oh. that fact, just him or is it his own it's just him it's just him yeah um, so that does that fill his lungs I'm trying to remember the spell what the... Uh, Riptide uh, it, it just gives me the, the uh, basic it does ah, okay. damage per success so I'm, I'm assuming like all good riptides, it sucks the water out. Then I can just splash back his face out of badness. <laughs> what, you get to paint him red? Turn him into a desiccated husk. Yeah. yeah, you know. There's a lot to be said. The best salt water is the salt water that's not inside this rat ogre. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so you lock your eyes with the target, and the magic of the easier seat flows through you and begins to fill their lungs with water. 
um, so that they can't breathe until their lungs basically burst from the water. You lock eyes with this rat ogre and it just kind of like, it snarls at you and then starts to like, and starts to like spit up ether sea as its lungs start to fill. It starts to like grab at its chest and start almost claw at its flesh because it can't understand what's going on. Um, and after a moment, it kind of like starts to sway and then just kind of like tips over and just with a crunch and a splash cr- crashes through the, the wooden scaffolding and into the water and just splashes in and uh, starts to drift away as it is killed. Oh, delightful. Job. And for my next trick, <laughs> I'll use metal uh, to attempt to cast an Archean uh, bolt just into the swarm as they come charging Excellent. forward. Excellent. Sounds good. So, Deanna 4, only the six dice. That's all. Zan, Zan breathes a, a sigh of relief as that <laughs> thing falls into the, into three, the, the three mark. Three successes, so three damage into the swarm. Excellent. So that um, basically like blasts through them. You spray Skaven left and right as they go flying, and you take out three of the Skaven. Cool. Okay, and then it is Uzik's turn. So mm-hmm. um, let's see. He is going to basically pop out again. He's not that far away, and he just like squeals and yells out at Imran this time, um, seeing her take out the the rat ogre, uh, and <laughs> just squeals disease, disease again. Um, so if you give me a body fortitude test, there, Imran. I really, really won't. On fours. <laughs> One. Hey, but that's just the one maximum. That's at least something off the roll. So that is good. maximum success I can achieve. Excellent. I feel very happy. So you take four damage, which ignores armor, um, uh, as you're just filled with this this pestilence. Uh, but you're already poisoned. So you're already you know, poisoned. Nothing yeah. to worry about. Yeah, yeah. Quits yeah. in. Yep. Um, and then standing. he is going to try and hide again. <laughs> as a good skaven should. He kind of dips into the shadows and ducks beside some of the, the loose scaffolding nearby. Um, Zan and Imran lose sight of him, but Derek, you can you can pick him out. Um, you uh, can still catch him. Um, you've got your eyes on the prize, Derek. So. Yeah. I mean, the rat ogre is dead. You know, it's it's time to whip out my bow again. The, uh, <laughs> the gutter runner knows when to when to call it quits and has actually disappeared as far as it's time. <laughs> <laughs> So he's just in the peanut gallery now. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so, Derek, it is your turn, and then it is Zan's turn. Okay, so, uh, Zan, can you take care of those plague monks? I will try! <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So, uh, Derek is basically going to, seeing the, the leader of the Skaven still just trying to hide in the shadow, but I can see his fuzzy little butt poking out, is going to take a <laughs> shot at him with his great bow. So I am good. What's his defense? I see you. Uh, I think it is. Let me check really quick. Apologies. Where is he? Average. He is average. Okay, so threes. Excellent. That will be three of them. Plus your ball was four. Uh, yep. So four more damage on him. Excellent. I will this metal... massive spear arrow it strikes him in the ass. <laughs> I will metal for a second shot. So you fire at him and it hits into his shoulder and takes damage. He lets out this squeal and pulls it out. So he has now actually suffered a minor wound. Ooh. So he's a, he's a toughie, so he actually has wounds as well. Mm-hmm. This, this is fine. So I will metal for another attack on him, seeing that he's you know, pinned to the wall. And that will be another three damage on him. Plus one Excellent. for the bow, I guess. Plus one for the bow, so yeah, make yeah. it four. Yeah. Four damage. Okay. Ooh, okay. Uh... That will actually, yeah. He kind of, he pulls the arrow out and goes to scamper away and you kind of pause a second. And just as he's about to dart around the corner, fire off the arrow, slams into him, pins him against the corner of the wall. And he just like, it's through the back of his chest. He kind of reaches around trying to get it out of his back. And then just kind of eventually kind of just like withers and stops and just lies limp pinned to the wall. He is dead. Even uh, if we Derek, all die. Derek lets out a, a triumphant cry of for the Ever Queen. Excellent. Yeah. Um, the plague monks seeing this go to just leg it and just run to the next zone. So, if you wish, uh, they can only get one one zone away from you, so you can spend the next round cleaning up um, and eradicating this filth. If so wish. Yeah, uh, Aaron, you're up first, so you can you can have first shot if you want to. <laughs> oh yes, definitely. I will go for an Archean blast. Excellent. Sounds good. Because you what know, could possibly go wrong. 
what could possibly go wrong? I'll burn my nose as well. It's like the Dr. Pepper shot. <laughs> I'll save me. Oh, six, six, six. The numbers of the success. <laughs> and oh one five so that'll become a six so four yeah. mm -hmm. which doubles last. to eight because they're a swarm which absolutely wipes them out you, know, you you launch this uh this it's just a tidal wave rears up and just comes crashing down and the, killed uh, by the round fill the rats get washed away into nothingness uh, and with that uh combat is over uh, um excellent work uh, I think I think we took some wounds. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I almost need a bit of a terrible. rest after this. Uh, so, do you if, know how if... close you came to killing me? Oh, do you yeah. know how rare we are? Yeah. If there was like extended combat stuff going on, your toughness comes back at the end of encounter, uh, end of like a combat, doesn't it? But your wounds stay. That's the yeah. Thing. So basically, yeah. you take like a ten minute rest, and oh, your toughness yeah. comes back, but you keep your wounds. So if you were to go into another fight after this with a lot of wounds, you'd. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, Zan is going to look over to the cages um, mm -hmm. uh, where before and dash over towards them to see if the two occupants are okay. Uh, uh, yep, you, you rush over and you see in the the right-hand cage um, is a branch witch, which you assume is Joy Branch. Mm -hmm. um, she has these kind of um, yellow feathers flecked with, uh, with red and her bark is almost... Um, like rainbow bark. I don't know if you've ever seen the rainbow eucalyptus trees, they're absolutely stunning. Oh, so they're, yeah, they're yeah. kind of like uh, like that. Um, she kind of looks at you and you can see that her arm from the elbow down is pretty much decayed and rotten away. Um, like this has kind of slowly been creeping up on her. And you can see she has like these little almost burn marks in different parts of her bark as if she's been, this this liquid has been tested on her, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, the, in the other cage is uh, what looks to be a smith. He has kind of like the leather apron, as you would expect. Um, and he actually has a couple of the burns on him as well, but they look almost more like acid burns, like they're not having the same effect on her. Ah. Um, he looks just exhausted and just kind of slumped in the corner. She is still standing proudly, um, but her, her arm has kind of withered away. Um, she kind of looks at you and looks around and, and sees Darek and, uh, and Imran. Uh, she kind of in in a quite high pitched, which I'm not even going to try and do, um, sort of <laughs> sing songy voice. She's like, oh, "Thank you for dealing with the rat creatures. It is uh, all in the service of the God King Sigma." Um, uh, oh, Jarek, oh, like Redley, for her her expression does kind of change and like creak into almost a smile like a yes dear of course <laughs> Derek's gonna just look at her and just say come sister back into the light um she kind of she kind of nods slowly um and you can crack open the the cell door um and release her and make your way back up to the yes yeah. we will traipse our way back on the way back there zan will give a, a little heel to everybody kind of keep keep them up so Excellent. yeah um, you can do so you make your way back up to the city and over the coming days after quite a short period of time um joy branch goes straight back to work tending the gardens um sure enough the gardens come back to life um a number of the engineers from the ironwell arsenal and um the the, the collegiate arcane mages come down and, and you kind of you manage to lead a few of them down here to check and sure enough, it is one of the ancient Aglaraxian water purification plants that can then be fed into an irrigation system, um, which seems to be what the Skaven were trying to, to mm. do here. Um, testing the water, they can find it is basically filled with filth and pestilence and has been amplified with shards of uh, warp stone in it mm. um, to make it that bit more magical, which is part of the reason that the plants wouldn't respond at all to the Sigmarite magic or, or, or joy branches. Um, the, pretty much that row on the hanging gardens has to be completely cut, uh, cut away and removed and is brought outside the city and burned just to be safe. And then fresh seedlings are planted and, and nurtured by um, by Joy Branch and the, the wizards of the the collegiate arcane that, that can be spared. Um, so yes, uh, if there's nothing else you'd like to do, we can finish up there, but if there's anything you would yeah, like to wrap yeah. up for your characters mm -hmm. uh, or, or, or do a little epilogue, what you think uh, your characters will get up to after that? <laughs> 
Um, honestly, I think uh, Derek would probably spend a few days in the garden with uh, the other Sylvaneth, just helping to replant the seeds within the, the new arm of the gardens. Excellent. Zan will make a trip to Wormfoot's and um, decides that after his, after his display of Sigmarite might earlier in the week, he will go there and start chanting the, the, the tenants of Sigma to see if he can bring more to his cause. Excellent. <laughs> uh, Zan has never heard from him again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Sounds that legit. That makes sense. Yeah. Im- Imran will just take some time to herself. It has, after all, been a stressful time and I'm not really getting anything out of going traipsing through the muddy back alleys of uh, <laughs> the yeah. Crooked Haven, so uh, I'll just relax. What, you don't R- any souls souls? Aren't quite, they're not quite up to snuff the, no, the chaos really taste of souls. No tastiness? Yeah. It's not worth my while to even consider. Yeah. For, even not... even the shallow water dwellers wouldn't have <laughs> yeah. the worst kind of filth. Yeah. Once again, Bright Spirit is saved uh, by your group. For now, but uh, I have plenty more threats lurk, uh, lurk Very above cool. and below Very the streets. Cool. Fantastic. That was a fabulous Let's Play, I have to say. Yeah, that was good fun. Yeah, thanks, guys. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Nice and uh, heroic, whilst also incredibly deadly, is if Zan wants to, uh, to, I mean, to yeah. say something. I did feel like a murder machine, but I didn't feel like I was so overpowered that, was no, that there was yeah, no yeah. risk to me, which yeah. is yeah. what you want. It's very cool. Yeah, very absolutely. Cool. I think it, it the the combat can be nice and punchy. I think because then when you hit something like a rat ogre, you're like, oh, okay, they can <laughs> they can oh, be yeah, serious. Yeah, that yeah. big. Yeah. yeah, you get that point. It's like I'm so powerful, and then oh no, there's other things that can yeah. hurt me. As well. well, I mean, like whenever uh, Derek basically wiped an entire platform of plague monks, it was just like, I got this. It's fine. Rat ogre. <laughs> oh hi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's 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 a lot of fun. Uh, mm. And it definitely makes you feel uh, feel heroic. Um, mm-hmm. very good. Uh, very yeah, that's what we're after in life. Yeah. Well, folks, very good we are going to push on. Uh, let us know what you think below, uh, and if you plan on delving into di- uh, Bright Spear as well, uh, let us know that. So, until next time, our merry bound of our band of soul bound companions get together. Uh, we shall bid you adieu. We hope you enjoyed this let's play. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.